Do not listen to the song. Keep coming back to us. Wait, what? Uh, the, the song says, I have to stop. Keep coming back to you. Oh, got it. Sorry. I was listen. listening to the song, and then all of a sudden somebody <laughs> told me to stop listening, and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> hey, guys, it's December. No. Uh. Oh! Oh, not even the year. The month. The month. Let it be the, the January. Who let fine. it be 2021 already? Hello, everybody. Stick to the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> it's Smarch 32nd. Smarch. Lousy Smarch weather. <laughs> uh, we've got 70 degrees outside right now. It's gorgeous. It's going to be this I, way all week long. High of 75 great. today. Not a cloud in the sky. Austin, beautiful. Take that. Baltimore. Smarston. Marston. James Smarston. But Austin. Uh, hello, everybody. January 4th, 2021. We'll get started with weird things. Hey, Andrew. Hello. So tomorrow is my cousin's birthday, and I remember okay. turning five years old and being really excited that I finally caught up with my cousin and mm. told him, hey, man, I'm 5'2". And he said, so what? I'm six and peeled out. And then that was the moment. Uh, I guess we could do the math here in 1981 that I figured out that I was never going to catch up with him. <laughs> <laughs> that it was all a lie and that trying was in a, was was futile. I wish you had said five two. That's tall for a five year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I remember the dad. My dad told this the story where we went fishing and I'm a little boy and you know they're in Oregon and he. In his, so he, my dad's in, we're in our boat, and my, some of the guys out there, and they get the, his line gets caught into some other guy's line, right? Some guy in some other boat, their lines get caught. They're trying to get the lines free. They finally get the get lines free, and then the guy in the other boat shouts, I'm free! <laughs> and then I go, I yell, I'm four! <laughs> <laughs> I'm for freedom. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, you guys want to do, uh, <laughs> do some weird things? Please? Yeah, man, I'm stoked. That was, not only could I tell, not tell it's between three and free, <laughs> you know. All right, Angel, I'll uh, count you in. How about that? Yay. All right, let's do weird things in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Intermean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, everybody, that's me. Hey, man, three out of four Weird Things hosts agree that Weird Things is more important than, I don't know, the election that the election. divides the Senate. I, I was going to say decides the Senate, but I guess divides works just as well. <laughs> uh 2021 <laughs> it's all better now man so, don't you know 2020 yeah. it was a haunted year now it's over how do you Everything feel it's fine I, I, I have to i mean look give give people something to something to talk about Go, let people say good riddance to 2021 i don't know so to 2021 I, or 2020 hey man let's give I'm them something give, to talk about let's give i'm gonna something. give you a hypothetical conflict not anybody i know okay imagine that you had a significant investment in tesla stock in 2020 mm. and you watched it go up tremendously in value how would you feel about the year <laughs> hypothetically, people are going through... hypothetically i would yeah. have noticed that today alone it went up 3.35 or 53 percent uh hypothetically yeah oh. and, and and here you are in some <laughs> place where you have people who are losing jobs and suffering and whatnot and you're going through uh, the worst gear of their life and then you're like this person's like holy cow look at this stock did you know mm -hmm. um, and then you're on venmo and Paul trying to help people around you considerably out of guilt. hypothetically how, how fast might what that might somebody in that position uh re-diversify their stocks <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, if they were already pretty diversified to begin with. Okay, hypothetically. Um, hypothetically, good. Though, hypothetically, that's good. But anyhow, good. yeah, it's hypothetically, a weird, high five. It's weird times. <laughs> it's weird times. Weird times where it's this that mixed sort of like, man, what a horrific year for tragedy. And it's like, ah, oh, World War II, but man, my munition stocks went Boy, way up. Jam is going nuts. <laughs> it turns out prioritizing yeah. the economy <laughs> was good for the economy. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So uh yeah uh yeah we haven't talked in a while i i think uh i missed the last one but uh um you know now now our problem is hey our vaccinations are piling up and we don't know how to distribute them right i'll <laughs> tell you like, what oh, geez that's a that's a boots on the ground reporting my parents have a neighbor who's like got more time and than anything and, and is calling constantly found a retirement home that had like 80 extra units and was like uh called my parents said hey gonna get you covered we're gonna get covered everything will be fine they got 80 extra units they got more units than they have people at the re their retirement home and then um not so much people who were able to do the shots which I thought was really weird. But, Wait, are you saying that the 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 administrating staff was not able to get a vaccine before the people that they were serving? Uh, what the story I heard, sure, sure, all sure, of sure. this hearsay, uh, was that they literally had the units on hand, but they had nobody with the blessing oh, to administer them. Couldn't have anyone do it. Correct. Oh. Correct. So 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 even though my parents, my parents' neighbors, all that stuff, like they're all like. Well, these are extra units that are not being used. We would like to use them. And they said, oh, if only we had a person with the blessing, uh, you know, to, to do this. Yeah. I mean, there have been reports of, of you know, uh, people running out into the street and saying like, hey, this vaccine is about to expire today. Who wants it right <laughs> would, now? Would you like it, pizza driver? And then they do it um, because they're, you know, they need the, the super low temperatures. And I'm sure a lot of places aren't able to maintain those temperatures. Uh, before they administer them and it, that I, makes a conflict I, with, with it's, it's, in my imagination everyone turns into rod blagojevich saying like like you don't even understand the value of the thing that i have i, I, I gotta get my full worth out of this i i i don't know enough to go well here's the, this is who did it or this is because there's a lot of it's state level mostly it's state distribution is sort of the level and i don't know enough about even my own state to be able to say where the issue is or whatnot i will say this the thing that I think that hurt, that really, really, really hurt, was in the beginning, there was this attitude of, no, we're not vaccinated this year. No, we're not. There was Hold on. Sorry, Andrew. Can, 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 can we, can, uh, can you take that back again? I don't know. We had a, a huge network issue and uh, we, we cut out a lot of that. Um, can, can you take it back? Uh, from so I think part of the, well, let's re, I'm going to restart the uh, Opal because I think I'm getting a lot of delay there. Okay. Sure. Sure. We're going to pause, everybody. Everybody do the sure. pause do dance. Now? Yes, we can. Yeah. Hello. Welcome back. Okay. All right. So I think part of the problem is, because a lot of it, like, we, we, we all point to the person we don't like or whoever would say this. A lot of it's state level. A lot of it's just state. You know, this is the fact. Distribution is like state level sort of thing. And, and every state has their issues. And I think part of it, though, was this, when the idea that there was a vaccine proposed, like, Hey, we may have something by the end of this year. We're going to try to do this. Ridiculed experts, like there's videotapes of people going, like you know, one of my favorite children's science explainers is going, "It's going to take two years. It's two years. Anything before this, you know, ridiculous." Um, no, it turned out it was like seven months. But anyhow, um, we had this, but part of it was people were people. Nobody really thought it would happen this fast. And all of a sudden, oh wait, we have them. Uh, what do we do now? And I think part of it is that. Optimism versus negative, negativism, ne uh, optimism versus pessimism. If you live in a world- <laughs> I was like, there ought to be a better where, word. Oh wait, there is. <laughs> I'm so positive, I don't even know the word that's the opposite <laughs> of optimism. If you live in a world where like, no, I think we could happen, I think it could happen, let's prepare for it, then you're prepared and you sort of figure out how to do these things. If you're like, no, 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 oh, we have it. Okay, well now I gotta figure out how we gotta distribute this life saving vaccine that we're saving, you know, many, many lives and helping protect the elderly. I I I this might only be uh secondhand knowledge at best, but um uh 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 
even at the state level, it's there. There's a lot of logistical hurdles. I don't know if you know it. The federal government kind of hasn't been doing a good job with with the with the handling the pandemic, in my opinion. And uh, I, that, I'm, that not, meant, I'm not going to say good or. But, but I, I understand that. But yeah. but but that's also meant that I, the that the states. Uh, have also been having trouble. You know, they don't know how many they're going to get. They don't know where they're going to go. They didn't know what how to prioritize Guys, originally. I, got, I understand that. I got an answer. No government, federal, any government in the world did a good job. Let's make that very clear. And and we had, oh, we should be like these other places. And now they got spiking rates and stuff. And and we had, you know, people here, who, you know, doing book tours on how great of a job they handled. And now they're watching humongous problems. Nobody's done a good job. Like they're okay. very, very clear. I'm not going to say uh, that. That's all fine. Uh, uh, my my yeah. point yeah, go ahead. My, I, okay. Was the attitude, no, it won't happen. We're not going to get this vaccine this year, helpful or not helpful towards being prepared for distributing a vaccine this year? Uh, yeah. So it's, it sounds like 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 the very expectation that, that it's not going to turn out well in some ways sounds like uh, from a, a, and, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, and, and state health organization if you're or if you're a planner and you're mm -hmm. thinking okay we need to think about a rollout and you're like no we're not going to have it this year then you're not going to plan for a rollout and that's part of the problem is people got caught off guard because we had a vaccine while people were thinking we'll plan for a rollout next year we'll plan for this we'll do this nobody did the planning in any depth because they we were told it wasn't going to happen this year I, my my secondhand experience would 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 disagree with that they, th that they had been starting to plan as early as you know around the election um but oh, it's starting starting i've been starting to plan in my colony on europa okay Great. well it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big machine it's a, i'm saying it's a big machine and 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 you they can they're uh, i sure they're doing the best they to, that to, they can. to I, I don't back. think they are <laughs> i okay. i don't think they're doing the best they can and because I think there was, I'm still hanging by people, and then this expectation, oh, well, we're not going to, we're not going to have a vaccine until next year or whatever. Same people, oh, wait, now we got to, like, I, I, I just don't think I, that that's the problem that someone said we won't have a vaccine until next year. I don't think that that's a singular so problem here. If, if, if we oh, could, I put, don't know it's a singular, but it's a factor. If, if, if we could put a pin in that, I would love to know whether or not there's any credibility to the claim that i heard which was uh, that that uh, they had sequenced the 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 vaccine uh, within like four days of, of 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 having isolated the gene or something like that like is that really how fast yes. everything else has been yeah. nothing but, but but just testing making sure it got to enough people and and results were you know double blind categorized yeah there there is you know the testing the procedures things like this and now we have thing too where the vaccine, uh, the, the most prominent vaccine is 90% effective. Most flu vaccines are maybe 60 or 70% effective. But we're doing, we're, the FDA can approve it for single dose usage and double the total number of doses, and everybody can be vaccinated by March. But the likelihood of that happening is not there. And I guess what I'm trying to say, Bryce, I'm not saying it's one problem or one person's fault or anything like this. I am saying an attitude of if you go into it thinking, well, everybody says this, so we don't think we're going to have to deal with this until later. And then all of a sudden, because it got political very fast, very political very, very fast about how soon we'd have a vaccine, not realistic, not going to have planning, would think, well, that was bad. to. If you have X amount of resources, they would think it was bad to plan for a rollout this soon when thinking people were being told, no, we don't think it's going to happen until a year later or so. So uh, that actually brings up Another thought that that I haven't really come down on what side I, I, I like I understand both motivations when when uh, uh, like, for example, I've, I didn't want to say any one person because everyone's going to decide they're either on this person's side or against it. But 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 let's say Dr. Fauci or whatever, like he talks about uh, had talked about how um, herd immunity would be at 60 to 70 percent and then that moving goalpost happened and he full on copped to moving the goalpost and explained the reasons why and i found myself really torn because as an a uh, bit of a objectivist uh you know um uh, somebody who who like uh, uh, likes evidence and so on like i understand why he would do that and i applaud his honesty 
but but that was like that was like fresh meat <laughs> for an entire group of other people who to decide that 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 nothing that 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 was good or bad or whatever like i i i understand um uh, why you would be slow to 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 admit the severity of of a, I I, I guess I guess I'm asking I, about the question about the noble lie. Is there ever a noble? It's lie? not. We live in a democracy. We live in a democracy. If you're going to do a lie, if you're going to lie, you better have your receipts. And afterwards, you better. Have this was the smart choice, and that's not happened. Had we had masks back when I bought masks in January, and then when when said people are like no you don't need to wear masks their goal is so oh, we need to reserve masks for you know primary health you know providers understandable but a lot of people got sick and some people died because they didn't wear masks because our government told us we don't need to wear masks because there was this ulterior plot and i would argue i would say that again don't have the data to back it up but somebody will probably would have been, we would have slowed the spread had we been wearing masks back when they're saying don't wear masks and so i would say the receipts are not checking out and it's a problem in a democracy you don't lie. Yeah, you was it lie. was is it Poland? There there was some Eastern Bloc country that full on didn't have masks and just everybody knitted masks and and it turns out they were better than nothing up until and, yeah. and if I remember correctly, the data was they were doing pretty good up until just everybody pooped the bed. <laughs> and then suddenly yeah, like like it's Yeah, and part of it, you know, we were looking at other countries going, why can't we be like South Korean? Like, well, they were wearing masks. Like, that's the thing. Like, oh, we should respond like there. And then like, oh, well, China's got a great response. Like, well, one, we don't know what its response was, but they're wearing masks, (laughs) you know? And and that's the thing is that like, that's part of the thing that's frustrating is that like, I, I, like I said, it's democracy. It's not how you handle, it's not how you handle our public officials should not be using line as a policy. I mean, there are, there are exceptions, might be wartime stuff like this, but you got to have your receipts. You know, Lincoln, Lincoln did, you know, stuff that afterwards were like, okay. So uh, to bring it back to weird things territory, we're now at a place where uh, we're in that, that mushy middle between like a vaccine's been made and we're not yet to 100% availability. And there's all kinds of conspiracy theories uh, talk about like whether any particular policy is ageist, racist, classist, you, uh, uh, anything that ends with IST. Um, is there any right answer on how to do the vaccine rollout? I mean, the, uh, uh, at this point, I would imagine it's a good time to be Pfizer or AstraZeneca or any of those folks where it's like, hey, man, my job is to pull this lever and make more vaccine. How y'all roll it out, that, that seems like a you problem, not a me problem. What, what's the best way to roll out a vaccine? I- or, yeah, or, or or what what is the is there any way let let's try to keep it meta maybe uh, is there any way that won't be judged by harshly no. by 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 other groups? But I guess I guess not when we're dealing with you have to prioritize fear. Yeah, you know you have to well, roll should, out rapidly. It's, yeah, I think it's I think it's you start the most vulnerable. Like who were the first to die? The elderly and the people with with the you know ailments and stuff. And I think that you know frontline workers, elderly, you know, I think that's where you start. You know. Well, so 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 let's um, do. Uh, what's interesting is frontline workers and the elderly are kind of two different um, ethical motivations. One is those most likely to die from the disease versus those who are most utilitarian. Uh, uh, have the greatest utility from a uh, economic perspective. Well, highest uh, risk of exposure. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Because they're also yeah. physically there or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, then you get into weird stuff like, well, I don't know, our 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 air quotes leaders, you know, our politicians or whatever. Are oh, they ridiculous! More important. I, watching. Yeah, watching senators and watching people getting vaccinated before my parents yeah. drove me nuts. Because it's like, like, oh, you're you're under you're under forty and you're getting vaccinated. Great. I know two people, two older people right now who I'd love to be vaccinated, but aren't. And the oh, we're doing this because we're trying to show people it's not it's safe. Nobody who thinks it's not safe is going to be swayed by that. Nobody, nobody is going to. And that was just that that whole show. And that was bipartisan bipartisan across the board and i'm not pointing a finger at any particular it's everybody let me make that very clear i'm not like because i'm not like well my guy and i my person to be like no like i think it's messed up i think it's a problem of bureaucracy whatever but like that was that's the sort of frustrating thing is it's like like 
you know, we, well, we have 15 days to slow the curve because to protect grandma. Great. Is grandma protected? No. But look who's getting vaccinated, you know, who's, you know, you know, I've seen, and it's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. I, I was like, I credit to, I, I'll give credit. Like, I don't know much about it. Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, like, you're going to vaccinate? He's like, no, I'm not, vol- you know, like, I'm not, you know, the at-risk group. But let them get vaccinated, then I'll get vaccinated. And I'm like, wow. Like, that's. Uh, you got you a know, tank, Bryce? To hear that out of a politician was. Um, I, I mean, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, it's, there, there's, there's so many different weird sides to this, right. Of like, you know, uh, hospital workers in this County, 40% of them said they would not take the vaccine. And, and, and then you look at, uh, uh, uh was it Columbia university in their hospital system where they didn't, they've, they vaccinated all their administrators and did not vaccinate <laughs> their residents because their residents technically did not have a, like a home location. And so their algorithm didn't give them one. It was BS. That was such craziness. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's I, like, and those, and, and those are the types of things where it's like, like, I don't know whether it would have been more time or more care that those things could have been caught, but I'm, uh, you know, at least in the, Col- the Columbia case, like that's, that shouldn't have happened at all that's very obviously the, not a blame thing it on an algorithm was dishonest it's out because if you're saying oh we had was there no human in the loop to go look at who was who was doing this then that's then you that's responsible if you're planning the world out and there's no sort of stuff the future of you know perfect ai <laughs> uh, so, is, so, can, sorry can we pause again and I, I, we, we keep dropping you and I, I don't know if there's anything that we can do um uh Maybe just disconnecting and reconnecting from your net. Or... Let me check something. I'll be right back. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, when we get back, uh, I'll, <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember my thought. I'm okay. Can you keep a it, pin in it? Yeah, yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, it's so wild to talk about this kind of stuff, given that normally we speak about these in the hypothetical completely. And it it does change things to talk about these in the practical. Like this is a real thing that is happening. This is not our favorite science fiction movie or book or whatever. Sure. Uh, and and you know you are able to judge it on the execution, which you know you kind of don't want to talk about in the hypothetical because because that's that's tough to be like, oh well, they're not even going to do it well. Well, that's you know that that's you know talking about attitudes, but. Um, but then yeah. you look at the execution. I don't know. It's uh, it's it's from a lot of different angles. Mm. And plus, also there's the uh, uh, I don't know. I guess the the in theory aspect, and then the in practice aspect. Uh, um, yeah, Andrew, we we I, I can still see that we're getting a few that we that we. I moved. There were some boxes in front of my my router, and so I moved those out of the way, and that may have been interfering with it. Okay. Uh, well, um, then, uh, then let's jump back into it. Um, I think, uh, uh, Andrew, do you, do you want to, uh, uh, maybe restate, uh, 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 the last thing that you were saying, if you can remember it? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I would say that I, you know, obviously there's a lot of frustration out there and, and I'm not in the position of being the person having to make these decisions, which is probably best for everybody. Um, I, I do say that, and maybe I'm guilty of this too, but it is the, our urge to politicize things is costing lives. And I mean, this on across the board and not say one group, group A, because we see this, we see that some people, you know, even the most precautionary measures out of trying to make some sort of statement, other people taking sort of this, you know, draconian approaches towards stuff, which making it worse, whatever. And I wish that we were in a place where we really embraced more of a, what if, dialogue and i'd say that that was part of my starting point the frustration of the vaccine rollout was because the idea that we'd have this so quickly was ridiculed by people who are many people who are now responsible for helping implement this and i believe in a positive attitude towards like we could solve this we could think that largely it's a very beneficial attitude it doesn't mean it's these things are solved or whatever but when you start with it won't then it won't and and to be clear, uh, is it your opinion that 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 some of 
whoever these people are uh, were engaged in the noble lie like they thought they were protecting the populace by not getting over excitement about like hey man no be serious about wearing masks and staying at home uh in 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 to encourage that i'm gonna i'm gonna double down on how there ain't no vaccine around the corner and then whoopsie doodle the vaccine comes around the corner I don't I, I think that may have been a factor as to sort of managing people. Everybody's trying to manage everybody else's expectations, which I understand and that. And you use that with information and not manipulation because every manipulator, and as we've seen, they are not. We, we've increased the level of distrust for public health officials and not increased it. It's, you know, I mean, it, it's, gotten, it's gotten worse in, in many ways because of what, you know, how things have been handled, et cetera. And I'd say that we had a lot of, and people who, were, who should not have been speaking way outside of their expertise and stuff about like, oh, this won't happen, this, this, and whatever. And I think it's a, I don't know, it's a frustrating factor where we, in the absence of facts, we just resort to whatever we choose to believe. So, so I have a question that I honestly can't decide what is morally the right of two option. And it's a real question that people went through uh, administrators, people in positions of power. So you've got this vaccine and you know that theoretically they're shot one and shot two and they're what, two weeks apart, right? Uh, or up to 12 weeks apart. Ethically, morally, if you're an administrator, if you're a middleman, if you're somebody deciding on pricing and all that, is there, what is the ethical argument for both sides between give everybody shot number one and just decide you're going to hit the ground running and that you're going to get shot number two in their hands by 12 weeks or only give shot one to everybody that you are certain you could give shot two to within two or three weeks. Like, like, uh, that is, the, um, uh, I don't know. I like to, I like to universalize a lot of these problems and I found myself really, conflicted like i don't know what the right answer is and that uh, well, when it, it comes to utilitarian you know uh, the, the greatest good we have to determine a goal if the goal is fewer people dying of covid then give a shot in a single person effective to take take your 40 million doses and give them to 40 million people instead of 20 million people because you, now you've doubled the number of immunity it's simple so 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 yes, give it give everybody shot number one and and um, uh, there is kind of the outlying factor of uh, the fact that it's possible that there's some amount of immunity given just by one shot. So now you're in sort of like a in between like uh, quote unquote full full immunity or what have you. percent immunity. A Andrew, I'm sorry. We. It uh, we, we I don't. Keep, I don't know yeah. what it is. I, I I know you can't control it, but we you keep cutting out. Let me and try it's really different tough networks. For us. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that, everyone. I hate. We'll pause. We'll pause show, for but, a second. Um. It when it's. I mean. It it it. it uh, I want to make sure. I you know. Can be I mean, if this doesn't improve, I'll switch to my phone. Okay. Um. Um. I would uh, the 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 epic is according to Ron Bailey and what his reports on this double do, double dosage. 96% effective, single dose, 90% vaccines, often 60, 70 to 80%. It's an extremely effective vaccine. Okay, just can you, sorry. Single dose. Oh, we, 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 we're, we're losing the important losing part, the which is the numbers, numbers. here. Phone. So we'll, we'll, we'll pause on that. Switching okay. to phone, switching All right. to phone. All right. All right. It's, 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 uh, your knowledge is worthy of clarity. <laughs> Everybody, we're in, we are in a pause. We are we are simply in a pause. Um, Taking a moment, focusing on our breath. In, <laughs> I would say out. as I would say as someone who doesn't know anything about it, I feel like you're going to get a hard. It's going to be a tough time to convince people to get a vex to get half of a vaccine that they don't know the. They don't totally know the efficacy of, um, or that they are not going to get you know what what oh, they know should be the full full dosage. And if and we're in a world where you know certain uh, some groups are are not even sure that they would get the double dosage. Here. 
Save, uh, save it. Save it. Well, I was saying that while Andrew, before Andrew comes <laughs> in and tells us the right answer. Um, but I guess I will just cut all that up. Oh, let's see. Uh, hold on. Sorry, Andrew. Oh, uh, we'll swap your, over I think to your Skype. AirPods. Oh, sorry. Can you can can you can you hear us, Andrew? Almost there. Okay. Can you, can you speak for us so we know we? I can talk out. We did my it. Mouth. We solved it. Yes. We solved it. Okay. Okay. Pro so, was, so, so, uh, 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 we'll uh, dial back. Ron Bailey is where 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 you were at. Ron Bailey, who writes for Reason, who's been covering a lot of the stuff. Well, I love Ron, but Ron Ron famously said when, when this first started, when the first rumors of an epidemic coming out of Wuhan said, like, hey, given how fast, it's amazing how quickly we're able to detect this, whatever. Uh, we'll probably be able to handle this through the lockdowns, and this may we may have no more pandemics. <laughs> oh, that's right. He 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 did take the yeah. fairly bold stance that and, that maybe we're at the end of of pandemics. Full stop. Yeah, and, and his point, and and Ron is Ron's a smart smart guy. Ron was speaking, thinking from the assumption of assuming that all of our public health officials from China to here were acting in the way that we would expect them to do from information communication, et cetera, blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, but you know when you had the World Health Organization pushing against any kind of travel bans, when you had people acting in very, again, we'll be dismantling this for years, but yeah, you get where you were at. But anyhow, what Ron's pointed out, you know, like, hey, the of the two, the two of the two dose vaccines, like the, I forget which one it is, but um, two doses, it's ninety six percent effective. In a single dose, though, it's ninety percent effective. And 90% is much more effective than most flu vaccines. Wow. And so, and that's his, like, he, he's made a very cogent case. Like, the FDA but only approved it, though, for two doses. So it's up to the FDA to say, hey, you know what? Let's emergency situation. We'll let do single doses because you immediately double the vaccine supply. So and the, uh, uh, dur during the uh, technical hiccup, Bryce was mentioning that he wasn't certain that, that a lot of folks would be confident to go in to get the, the vaccine regardless. Or I, I can or, just say mm -hmm. that again, since we're yeah, going to not sure, have sure, that sure. in the show. Um, it, you know, part of my thinking is if, if, if we've, especially here where, you know, we started to see the rollout of the vaccine and people know that, Hey, all of these vaccines are two dose, uh, uh, you know, require two shots to be an effective, um, an effective vaccine or, you know, the most effective vaccine, whatever. Um, I feel like that if, if, suddenly the response is well hey we're going to cut costs and we're going to just give everyone a one dose and maybe we'll see about a second i think you're going to see people not want to engage with that or or you know continue you know social distancing well, or whatever if if they feel like they're going in and being a part of this process and now not even getting the the effective version of the vaccine I don't, no i don't well that's one it's not to cut costs it's in order to vaccinate the most people to get we can get you tell people what it is mm -hmm. single dose is 90 percent effective single dose by the read data is 90 percent effective. like hey listen two doses 96 single dose is 90 for we're going to make a single dose available to everybody who can or, or double the number of people available right now and get there and if people don't want to take it that's fine i like they were like oh like 40 percent of these people aren't taking it fine vaccinate the other people who are at risk who want to get vaccinated like that's i don't i don't see a problem like if somebody doesn't want to get vaccinated good for you i i would like that vaccine well i have you know people at risk who i love who would like to have to get vaccinated first good for you let somebody else do it we're not going to worry about you wow that's a whole other aspect i didn't think about where it's like how much money is it worth to spend on effective science communication to save the life of people who don't believe that they need to get vaccinated, uh, especially in a world where where right now there's everybody, the, uh, let's say, for example, there's a 61-year-old who says, I absolutely do not want this, want this vaccine. And there's a 32-year-old who's like, I absolutely do want this vaccine. How much money do you spend to convince the 61-year-old that he should take it? And, and it sounds like the answer is uh, uh, possibly zero uh, in, in the situation that, that you just described. Well, yeah, because we've seen that before, and that's the problem of health policy is they think, well, if we spend this much money, we'll have this effect. Like, no, we should, we know that doesn't really work that way. You know, the, the, these patterns don't change like this. They don't change by paying out $50 million to, you know, car campaign companies to try to change people's perceptions. Where do you, you look at like, you know, where do you find anti-vaxxer communities? 
strong red, strong blue communities. I live in LA. We have wealthy enclaves of people who don't get vaccinated, you know, don't want their kids vaccinated because they have fears of, you know, whatever. Same with, you know, in red state areas too. It's a very, it's both sides, both, both conservatives and liberals can have their own reasons for being fearful or, you know, we, you know, it used to be thought like, oh, the only vaccine truthers, you know, were Republicans. And then, you know, Trump started talking about an you know, accelerated vaccine program. And then you had major politicians on the other side going, I'm not so sure I want to take it now. And it's like, oh, geez. Oh, geez. It's like every, and again, I'm not saying nobody looks good in my book. Let me make that very clear. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, you want to do that? Great. Somebody else wants it. I mean, yeah. I mean, if I mean, if someone doesn't want to take the vaccine, don't force them. But at least, at least we should say, hey, the we're we're giving we're we know we're giving you you know the tested and effective two dose treatment versus you know at, at least you know speaking for today, change changing course and making a big change of like, oh, now they say now they say it's only one one dose and that'll be no they always said uh, that that was that information never changed the information's always been there if you read the data the fda but most people did not read that data no but i'm saying but it's not a lot but i i know nobody read it nobody read it that's the problem our public health officials haven't even read it the people on the news talking about this haven't read it and don't have to know and that's the thing that drives me nuts is it's the same it's the mass kind of thing all over again well i heard this whatever read the data look the stuff up you know and not just then then pontificate to the world but Think about everything that comes in here. And I'm just saying it's like, it's it's not a, if people don't want to take it, Bryce, I will take a single dose. Gladly, I'd like to do the two dose, great. Single dose, the only one available, <laughs> fantastic. I'm not saying we'll force people, that. I'm not saying force people who don't want it to to have it. Uh, that That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying, I think we'd be better off opting, you know, based on that data, we'd be better off saying, hey, everybody, we're going to do this in single doses. We get 90% because, you know, this it's this effective. We're going to do this. You would save more. The math is do the spreadsheet. You would save more lives. Less people get sick. Yeah, I, I guess um, the the bummer is that we're in the situation where because uh, I think all of us would love it if we were in a position where everybody got to choose. But instead, we're not only in a place where people don't get to choose, but get we to have choose. 50 different verticals of uh, various, you know, commissars or, or czars that are able to decide how it will be in their, in their in individual state, which you, you could make a case for. That's why, um, if you uh, leave it up to people's choices, then they will go and have big parties and, and, you know, won't be like, that's why we're having these spreads and these spikes is because people are going out and, and I live in LA, everything's banned. People are having parties. We are having a spike here. We have no outdoor dining, no outdoor dining. You cannot go anywhere. We're having a spike. People chose. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I agree. Well, people, people make bad decisions. Well, so I'm and, saying is that like no amount of policy is going to change that. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and likewise, I think the, the flip side is that, you know, the whole federalist idea was that you would have individ 50 individual laboratories to try different things and have different rules in different areas. And that's something we've talked about, even in the world of uh, uh, one of the other programs I do is called Cord Killers. It's all about how to cut the cable cord and watch what you want, when you want, whenever you want. And uh, we were talking about how some areas, uh, it, it, it's shocking to somebody in, let's say, Iowa that somebody in New York is watching a movie at a movie theater or vice versa. Um, mm -hmm. And it really does seem like, like, you know, my take was it should be like local weather. If it's locally a hurricane happening, then no, don't go outside without an umbrella. But if it's not, then that should be fine. But, uh, um, but, but it's tough when, when everybody is as wound tight as we all are, to 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 know what what the we, we all desperately crave a singular solution a singular policy and and, and I, I I just don't think we're gonna have one. No, we're not. But I mean, I think that my my frustration is more of like the 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 bureaucracies and the politicians of the planning, like because like L.A. is a thing that we banned outdoor dining on no scientific evidence whatsoever. There was right. zero evidence to ban outdoor dining, but they banned it anyways. So what happens so, when you uh, and, outdoor and, dining? And, but, by the way, see the noble eye argument. Imagine we talked about that for hours and hours, but 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 that's ultimately what, what it boils down to. 
Yeah, and the problem is there is well, they say they banned it. There is there was no evidence, right? They banned it in the middle of a holiday season where people want to get together and see friends. We had a relatively safe way to do it, like, oh, let's go meet, you know, Burbank outside, you know, the patio, whatever, we can go talk, blah, blah, blah. We had a way to do that. Banned it, no evidence. And I'm saying that it's possible there could be transmission, but probably very low level. Banned it. So did people say, you know what? I'm not going to see my friends. I'm not going to get together this holiday season. They said, okay, well, we're going to go do it in our home and we're going to get people in these unmonitored, tighter, smaller, less ventilated boxes. Hey, guess what? Spiked. Yeah. Right. I, Justin and I called this when they banned outdoor dining in California, we're both like, this is going to make it worse. And we watched it get worse. And it was like, and so is it, and it was a politics like, well, we tried. It's like, well, you probably, you, you just want to be able to say, not my fault. Well, and, and uh, what, what, what I'm hearing uh, as the third party in this conversation is both of you be right. Uh, 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 Bryce, you're, you sound 100% right to me in that. I think those people would have had holiday parties regardless of if they could have eaten outside. Pe uh, people don't make good decisions, right? And then uh, uh, and, and, uh, Andrew also sounds right to me when he says uh, la laws or regulations or, or tickets or whatever don't, are, are not effective at causing people to suddenly make better decisions. I, there are certain things that do and certain things that don't. And in, you know, banning indoor dining, I got that. And Bryce, to your point, if the, what the measure I'd say is I compare us to Florida, okay, which has a much like which allows you know allows outdoor and lets indoor restricted things. California had a much bigger spike. We had very similar demographics, very similar areas. When you compare us to other places in situations where that have been draconian without you know, without a populace that's willing to comply, you get that. And we watched our spike start to go up the moment outdoor dining got banned and you look to see where the ticks started happening, people started moving those things indoors. The data, again, could be causation correlation, but we saw the spike once this happened. Florida, so, other places, we didn't see it the same way. Look, looking forward, what do, you, what do you think it looks like when it comes to a pro-social way to communicate that you either have or have not been vaccinated, and how much does it matter when vaccination is not 100% guarantee of anything? It's it's not the same as, uh, I, I, actually, I was about to say smallpox, but I actually don't know how effective the smallpox vac vaccination is. I, I don't, again, I'm like, uh... 90% or 96% with two doses is pretty damn effective. The 4% are generally people at a much higher risk group are people who are sort of, and again, we need to take extra precautions to protect and spend more money and resources to protect those people, not just sequester them somewhere and not watch what happens or what have you. But I'm saying that's really damn effective. I think it comes down to sort of then sort of a personal choice. If you get a widely available vaccine at 90 or 96% effective and you get a majority of people will get vaccinated, you're going to see much lower rates. Whether or not somebody else vaccinated, not my business. Don't care. Oh, that's interesting. I, I suppose I was thinking about um, the pro-social acceptance of, of like, hey, don't worry that I'm here because I've been vaccinated. But, uh, but for you, it, uh, uh, it, it, everything's uh, it, it's the reverse, which is uh, if I'm walking outside, I'm assuming the whole world has it and nobody's vaccinated but me. Yeah. What about you, Bryce? And, Where are you at? Uh, I mean, I, I think we're on the cusp of uh, probably a pretty nasty social phenomena of people commoditizing and monetizing um, very unofficial ways to let everyone know that you, uh, maybe you got a vaccine, right? Whether it's patches, pins, cards, whatever, right? Like there are, you know, they give you, we've seen, I've, they've got, they're people taking photos of the little vaccine card that they give you when you get your dosage. It's just paper. You can just you could probably fake that really easily. I think that that there's going to be, I I I I don't know if it's I don't think it'll be major, but I think there'll be a non-zero number of case stories of people who you know, uh, walked into the store and showed my I got vaccinated card and they didn't or I, I didn't. Why? But again, what's the point? Again, why why does a store need to know or care if everybody works there is vaccinated? Um. Yeah, I think it's all uh, uh, signaling of various varieties because you're right. Like, um, I think for every every video that is out there of someone complaining about you know a mask policy in a store is another chance for that to happen. Yeah, but 
the mask policy in the store is because we're all vulnerable. If I'm vaccinated mm -hmm. and, and 96%, which is effectively, if you're healthy, 100% effective, fine. Don't care. Don't. I, why? Why? You're no risking. If somebody, <laughs> somebody theoretically in a closed environment, not wearing a mask, increases the available virus in there to people who are not vaccinated. It's a different thing. I just, I don't, I must be missing something because I'm like, if I'm vaccinated, what the F? Cough in my face. Well, well, well the, uh, I, I think the, the, um, what I suspect the worry is, is if, if we make uh, a badge somehow a, a symbol that allows uh, levels of VIP privilege, whether it be to get into a store or get into a club well, again, or, or whatever. I, I, uh, why? If, why? 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 Why what, would you? What, uh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm not advocating for that, by the way. I, no, but I don't. Yeah. But I don't, what does it do? Like, if I'm all vaccinated, why would you care? Why would you say, "Well, we don't want an unvaccinated person here. They're not going to get you sick." Uh, for example, let's let's take a maybe less loaded question and say, uh, let's say there's a bar that gives a free drink to anyone who has an "I voted" sticker. Yes, you could absolutely counterfeit an "I voted" sticker. Also you could have a legitimate argument about whether or not it's a good or a bad thing to say you voted. Um, but uh, nobody disputes that they're easy to counterfeit and it ultimately doesn't matter. Also, I would not dispute that that bar ultimately just wants people inside hanging out at their establishment. And so likewise, that's the same for, or in my mind, if it's an I vaccinated sticker and a, you know, being allowed into a, private establishment, uh, a, a, a grocery store or what have you, where it's like, like we're, we're going to, we're going to make a stand about like only allowing vaccinated people in or, you know, similarly pro-social behavior. I, I, I mean, oh. I, I don't, and I don't even expect that that'll be the case. I'm just saying that the phenomena that we have now of people waving around, you know, fake ADA cards saying, yeah, you, you know, you don't have, to, you have to let me in the store without wearing a mask, which is not how the ADA works. Like, I think we're just going to see that with people waving around badges, you know, patches or pins or fake cards that say I got vaccinated, even if they didn't just as a, as a way to be like, I don't, I don't need to wear a mask. I got this thing. I now bought this $20 thing that gives me, well, uh, again, if I'm vaccinated, I don't need to wear a mask either. I don't care. I just don't, <laughs> I don't understand if I'm vaccinated, why I should care if somebody else wants to pretend they're vaccinated, what benefit do they get? Uh, I think the, the reason you might care might be because um, when you've done something legitimately, it's a bummer when someone else claims they've done the same thing. Um, why are, I, again, my point is, how are they claiming? I mean, what, why would they claim or what would they I don't. And, did, you, and, did, you, did you get a flu vaccine? Did you get a flu vaccine? I did. Okay. Do you get it every year? I do. Do you I, wear a sticker? Does anybody ask you? Has any, who asked you? Was the last time well, somebody asked you if you had a flu vaccine? You, right now. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's it. Is it is it? The flu is very contagious. Right. I get the flu vaccine mm -hmm. all the time. Still managed to get flu. Nobody effing cares because if you're vaccinated for flu, then you're less likely. But I'm just saying, it's like, sure. Like, but I'm I'm just saying, like right now. I mean, whatever. When when a vaccine is more widely available, yeah, it won't be a problem. The people who want a vaccine will have it, and those who don't. Won't. It's the scarcity yeah, that, that that makes everything tricky you know, right in, now. In, okay. in the during the rollout, and when you have you know part time staff, cashiers and and greeters, whatever, who still have to you know enforce pol mask laws. If people are now rolling around or mask policies, whatever, rolling around saying, "Oh, I got a vaccine. I don't need to wear a mask. I'm not contagious." No, that's not. Okay, I mean, you're talking about short term. Yeah. I mean, yes. Again, I have friends who've had COVID. They still wear effing masks. And because we never came up with, and they've been immune, we have you, immune you, people. You could say my around. name. It's me. It's yeah. me. Oh, I had you, COVID you yeah. and I wear masks. Yes. <laughs> I had a friend got it back in March. I had a buddy got it back in March and he's been spending, you know, he's had to wear a stupid mask on his face all this time because, you know, and like, I hear no you, man. There's, he got yeah. COVID and it was on vinyl. You don't have to he rub it in my bad. face. He all right. Bad. He had it bad. <laughs> oh, really? But anyhow, yeah, mm. my point is not to say you wasn't bad, Brian. You're just bad too. It's a different bad. <laughs> my point is like, Bryce, to your point, until there's a mask roll out, yeah, everybody wear a freaking mask. You know, do the wear mask policy, whatever. Let's do the masks. You know, but like, there's no, there's no world in the short term where somebody's going to have a card or an ID badge or whatever, like in contagion. Like, no, look, I'm free. So, ain't so, I, uh, I think we are nibbling on a really interesting question is what does a lack of scarcity look like 
and when do we think we'll have a lack? When when will COVID immunization be as ubiquitous as a flu? But because you, to your point, Andrew, you're 100 percent right. It's not impressive, and it's not worthy of you know belting out to the stars that that you got a flu shot. Uh, and nobody. It cares. might be though. But, but now that I think about it, it might be actually if you got a flu shot, like I got a flu shot sticker, might not be a bad idea. Uh, well, 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 so so like at, at, at what point do we cross into boringness uh, and, and, and should we ever cross into boringness? Might we live in a better world if everybody, you know, kind of as a pro science, pro social phenomenon said, I did the reverse of smoking a cigarette today, you know, and, and, you know, you, you will not get secondhand flu from me. I don't know. I don't, we're not pro science. You know, we walk into restaurants that proudly exclaim no GMO, you know, genetically modified organisms is the, the, the most tested, one of the most tested things there is in the world. The safety issues, you know, are pretty established at how safe this is and beneficial it is. Yet people who consider themselves very pro-science get excited to buy products that say, we don't use the best of science to make this thing better. Right. So I don't know. Well, and, and, and likewise, there's complications to, to people who want to have less carbon dioxide emissions, but, but are not willing to consider nuclear power the safest power uh, per the numbers that we've ever seen in humanity, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. But, but having said all that, uh, I don't know. I like. I don't want to just throw up my hands and and back away from a question. I I do think I I I'd be really interested to sort of see the expected rollout because like let's say there's some number of amount of time for us to get eighty percent coverage when it comes to the vaccine, but of that eighty percent people who get the vaccine, there's some twenty percent of them that care the most about it and want to talk the most about it and will fight the hardest to get it. And there's some other 20% that will very begrudgingly do it. I, I, to, I, I don't know. All of this is fascinating, but, but maybe it's just, it's maybe it's just too close to all of us right now in this moment where, and, and I think you're right, Bryce, it's the scarcity right now of the moment that, that really affects things that, that, that shapes the conversation. But you know who know. is always right? Who? Anybody who goes to patreon.com slash weird things. That's Ooh. where you can support this kind of show. These kind of complicated arguments about the hard science. Science about like whether or not goblins are secretly Bigfoots in disguise. And are they in the fifth dimension? Also, how say good the was the fifth dimension as a band? Also, is it a band? That sounds like some grandpa stuff that we would talk about <laughs> on weird things. Head on over to patreon.com slash weird things get your own rss feeds get our after talks podcast uh sorry after, after things, things after things totally you get a couple show. days early that's fine it's fine you get it early uh but more importantly you keep us in business love you guys the fifth dimension is love <laughs> that's sorry like, oh, dang it. <laughs> i'm sorry I, I can't tell if i'm happy or sad that i understood that I, the fifth dimension uh, is luke basson <laughs> To any of our listeners who made it this far through my rant and this discussion, uh, you're appreciated. You're very, <laughs> very appreciated. Um, so, and uh, uh, Bryce, I'm going to apologize to you right now for talking over and all that. I, I always no, love fine. your points of view on. I love your points of view on stuff, and I'm very it, glad it, that you uh, bring that I'm into here. Not going to lie, it's all of these. Like this is us at our best is when we really get passionate and heady on stuff. Mm -hmm. Ooh, man, does it get complicated when literally technologically we can't <laughs> effectively have du full duplex communication sure we're dealing yeah. with some tech glad we got today. there yeah yeah i yeah. uh i and you know like i uh, you know i don't claim to be to know any of the data or or you know all of the the right numbers and stuff so i can only speak from you know kind of a lay person perspective and, and a conceptual perspective I as us all, and, and for anybody like, if you hear me have a back and forth with Bryce, it's like, we want Bryce here, so <laughs> there is this other sort of thing, too, and that is, it's like, Brian and I agree on a lot of things, but there's a matter of extremity to that, I would say. That's the, the, the extremity is probably the, the variation, and I'd say, Bryce, you've got your take on and it's good, so it's very, very, for those of you who yeah, listen to show, listen for, <laughs> we... This is what we want. It gets mm. heated or whatever, but we don't. It's not like, well, Brian, Bryce is not on the show next week because he disagreed with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Because, you know, 
the frustrating thing is to listen to something and you have a different take and you never hear your take even brought up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, and I'm sure there's takes that we met way more opinions than the ones even we have here or whatever. So. Hey man, I got, stuff we missed. I got a take. Can I give you my pick? Yes. My pick is whatever behind the scenes negotiation caused Amazon to finally be okay with uploading a decent quality version of the abyss. Uh, the oh, abyss nice. finally back on Amazon Prime. Uh, I, I I I I had beef with the fact that there was some kind of you know as rights come and go and all that stuff. But yeah. there was a hot minute that I told my kids, "Get ready, there's a movie called The Abyss." And what we streamed was a four by three pan and scan VHS rip <laughs> of The Abyss uh. that somehow was on Amazon Prime. It was embarrassing to me and to Jim Cameron. Uh, I, I covered as best Jim, I could. Jim, my buddy him. Jim. Yeah, me and Jim. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> Uh, dude, uh, getting back into the Blu-ray version, I, this wasn't even the director's cut or anything. And there's, there's beefs with, you know, how judicious the cuts are in the uh, theatrical release, but, uh, man, that stuff holds up. Uh, it, it's great. Jim Cameron knows how to tell a simple story. Uh, exquisite Chrome knows how to execute it very, very well. Doesn't overcomplicate the bit. It's, it's, it's awesome. Nice. And, and, and I will say, I will say. That CPR segment alone, oh my God, is it un- like our whole family sitting there holding hands, riveted, and he, just how long he lets that linger, uh, it, it, I, I dug it. It's a fascinating movie in a lot of reasons. The story's an interesting sort of story, but on a technical level, the there are two things that are kind of really cool. One was, you know, the liquid effects was ILM first, like really stretching the capability of what they could do with the water stuff, which later on when they did T2 was groundbreaking, but the abyss was pretty groundbreaking for the VFX and that of using, you know, organic things in an environment in a natural way like that. Second, do you know where he shot this? Yes. Uh, that's one of the stories that my the kids ocean. got. The ocean? got the no, ocean. no, no, no. You would think in a nu- an abandoned nuclear uh, a, a reactor. Oh, a cooling tank? Yeah, uh, it, it, the, the holding wow. tank. And in order to get it to look pitch black in there, you have to figure out some way to cover up everything, but make it so if somebody's dive equipment doesn't work, they can get up and breathe. Oh, wow. What do you do? You cover the surface in little black pellets. The entire surface is covered with little black pellets. Oh. And they also developed a communications, uh, you know, radio tech where everybody could receive their like and go and action and all that stuff. Um, think about it. If you're Jim Cameron, you don't also build in two way communications. Why would you do that? You only need them to hear you. So all of the actors during all of these shots, they would just get James Cameron saying and go do the thing. And then there would be extended periods where everybody would just hang out and wait, nobody knowing what was going on. And the actors eventually figured out that if they mashed, by the way, new technology that was developed for the show is how do you show faces with dive equipment? He developed a new type of helmet uh, that everybody was wearing. And the actors figured out that if they pushed their faces against each other, plate to plate and yelled at the top of their lungs, they could barely hear each other through there as they got the one way directions from the, from uh, the director. It's, it's huh. remarkable. It's, it's not quite at that perfect sweet spot, the way Titanic is in that perfect blend of practical and special uh, computer generated effects, but man, is it close? It's it, the practical effects are, uh, you could tell some stuff is miniatures. It was really fun for my kids to not be familiar with miniatures, you know, three foot tall, benthic explorers being knocked around by, by, you know, sea winds or whatever. Um, and, and they were like, how did they even, it, it was, it's, it's worth another look and it does hold up. And it's a very, very simple story that I think, I think people will like. Nice. I, know uh a diver a couple people who've been working on avatar 2 and everything i've heard about because it's got massive underwater sequences everything i've heard about what's going on at that is insane like underwater shots of like dozens and dozens and dozens of people professionally trained divers as navi whatever and just like epic epic sort of stuff everybody learning how to free dive and hold do breath holds for long periods of time so I don't know if the story's going to be any good, 
But, you know, what's why I've been hearing about going on behind the scenes and the making this thing, pretty amazing. Hmm. Yeah. It's taking everything from Abyss, taking everything that he's learned so far about the underwater stuff, all this. That's one of his expertise is think about the if you're James Cameron, people are like, you know, shooting on the water is the worst. James Cameron's like, huh, you know, hold my snorkel. <laughs> yeah. Shooting underwater. Yeah. That is like, Hold my you know, highly oxygenated liquid that totally you can breathe. <laughs> yeah, it's so, kind of amazing. Uh, right. Oh, a, 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 a quick oh. side jag that we didn't get to. There was a reason story talking about space smuggling that, that we never got around uh, uh, to. But a uh, uh, friend of the show, Richard Garriott, recently confessed that he smuggled James Doohan, uh, uh, Doohan uh, Scotty's ashes into space using a trick of right before you go off in a rocket, say, excuse, I need to take leak and then uh, drop trowel and sneak something into your underwear. <laughs> he snuck in a laminated oh, card shit. with the ashes of James Doohan. Wow. <laughs> Star Trek Scotty, uh, which is dope. Uh, that's amazing. Cool. I only remember the headline. I didn't know it was Gary. Now it makes perfect sense. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it said it said 2008. I'm like, I remember something space related that year. <laughs> and then it turns out it's our buddy. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, I got a pick. I uh, uh, Over the some of the holiday time here, I've actually uh, had a chance to play more video games. Uh, usually I don't always get too much time during the week. And uh, I, I started uh, a, a new game, but an, an old an old name, an old face. Uh, you might have heard of. They got a new Crash Bandicoot game out now. Uh, Crash Bandicoot Four. It's about time. These are the uh, is from, it is it Naughty Dog? No, this is Toys for Bob, who made the spot. They made the Spyro the Dragon remake from a few years ago, but they didn't they didn't do the Crash Bandicoot remake. That was uh, the people who did the the new Tony Hawk one. Uh, but this is like a whole new original story, um, a lot of new like masks and powers and levels and stuff. I think one of the interesting things about it is, um, you know, over the years, like like the original Crash Bandicoot, which was like relatively different, difficult, had also like a lot of hidden stuff. Right. If you didn't know or if you didn't look it up, it would be really difficult to find out like how you get the gems or what the gems do. Um, and now they're a little more upfront. Um, you know, they make it like, hey, you will get these many gems if you get uh, the fruits and if you clear without dying or getting, you know, these boxes. Um, I think one of the interesting things is that um, uh, you can play it retro style where you have lives and a game over or a modern style where you have like unlimited lives, but you get death counters when you die. And so you have to beat a level in so many counters. There are checkpointing systems and stuff i think it's really really well made um you know toys for bob did a really great job adapting the spyro stuff and and uh it's fun it just it feels like crash bandicoot and um it feels like how i remember playing crash bandicoot unlike the remakes which were really difficult which is how those games literally were um so uh i I think that's pretty cool i think it's on the playstation and it might be on the xbox um uh, it's also very funny that they call it Crash Bandicoot 4 because it's like the eighth one that they made. They just scrubbed all of those crappy <laughs> Xbox games that they made in the 2000s. So, Andrew? I have uh, two picks. One is just a quick one. I've had this Apple Watch on my wrist now for the longest time. This is like the fourth Apple Watch I've bought. And this one has been on my wrist since I've got it. Well, I mean, other one I take it off to charge at night. And can I tell you the reason why? Hmm the band the, oh. the new watch has the band which is just basically the, the elastic loop which makes it very easy to slide on and off and so it's it that's how lazy i am as a human being <laughs> that if i have to redo the band and do the little watch band thing i just get frustrated and i leave it off mm-hmm. it's made and it's super flexible i don't know if you've tried the new band no i this. haven't this, yeah, that, that would be the thing that I wear because I adjust. I got a bunch of just cheap knockoffs, but I have an official one, too. And I adjust it all throughout the day. Sometimes I'm at two, sometimes at three, sometimes at four if I'm crazy. Yeah, get get you can get like one of the knockoff loops. Okay. Try two like for cheap to try like this one. I got one's a little bit smaller when I was first trying to adjust it. Cause, but anyhow, um, it is the solo loop. But again, there are other, you know, it's apple and a billion dollars and silly but you can get like cheaper versions that i think are probably just as effective and just as stretchy and 
it is just a huge change. It has been a big change and just how easy it is to put this thing on or off and not worry about it. So um, that that's my that that made the, that's battery life obviously blah 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 could be better, but that loop an amazing sometimes a little tweak to something what seems like an insignificant sort of thing can make all the difference in the world wow uh my other pick is like uh just to reiterate i'm almost all caught up on the expanse and this was a series when it first launched i couldn't get into the book because the book just moved too slowly series first launched and i'm kind of like oh look pretty people in space seeing this da 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 and then i got pulled in and saw how in-depth and how great the stories were and it just continues i'm on the latest season i'm waiting to watch the last few you know slow down on my episode watch here but like it's such a well-done drama such a well-done story everybody's complicated the relationships are just as interesting as the world building and if you haven't watched The Expanse, I highly recommend it. It's in a, It goes to the story evolves and chains over time, but it still deals with what will be the problem when we go off into the frontier? People. We need people. Turns different out it's still people. Disagreements. Turns out people have yeah. different opinions about things. Now, what if people were robots? Yeah, well, that's, that's not, probably a different not, story. <laughs> yeah, different story. But uh, but like yeah, that you get into you know kind of this, and it's a sci-fi trope of like the you know the asteroid belters versus the you know Mars asteroid belt and Earth kind of the you know like you go back in the 30s sci-fi and that was sort of like you know what would happen if and it takes that idea and expands it and you know kind of a very just an absolutely I think it's done really well and I love that they try to make the science real or when unless it's a thing where it's a thing that they acknowledge this is a thing we don't understand but. Physics, you know, like they, they make an effort of you know, when people are walking around and, uh, you know, and they're in weightlessness, do you hear boots go clank, clank, clank? Nothing else behaves like it's in microgravity. That's fine. They're acknowledging it. They're acknowledging the fact that they don't have, and then every now and then something will float away to remind you, even though their arms fall to their side and clothes behave as if they're in gravity environment, it's a limited budget. I mean, it's a good, good big budget show, but it's like you don't want to have to spend your, all your time CGI in every single little detail. It's fine. They acknowledge it. So fine. it lives in a world where physics is real. And I like it. Nice. Expanse. Brian, you watched Expanse? Uh, I, I got into midway through the third season, and I fell like two episodes behind Bonnie. And it was just as it was getting tedious enough that it felt like homework to get caught up. And, and, and then... Before I knew it, I was one season behind, two seasons behind, and now I find myself in the weird place where, like, yes, absolutely, I will watch it all and get all the way caught up, but they just announced that they're going to cap it off at six seasons. Now, whether or not there are movies and stuff afterwards, we'll see. But uh, now I find myself like, well, do I want to get caught up just so I can wait another year, or do I want to get caught up all as the whole world is getting ready for the final season? I will say this. I was excited. A couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, is exactly where you were. I was middle of season three because it was feeling a bit tedious, dragging. Yeah, it was feeling like we 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 get this. The stories kind of needs to move forward a bit. Uh, but then I'm like, I was hearing good things about the later seasons, and I kept meaning to. It was on my watch list, and every night, I'm like, do I want to start watching The Expanse again? I went back in and just watched, looked looked at the episode. I went an episode behind, so one that I knew I would have all the triggers for. And just went back, started re started watching an episode behind. I'm like, oh, okay, I remember all the stuff. And then I got back in. And I'm very glad I did it because it, it takes a big turn in the next season. And so. Nice. Right on. Recommend it. It's been weird. Ooh. Hey, good stuff. Doggone right. Yeah. Uh, I do like Justin's continuing take that it's like, the expanse will end when Jeff Bezos tires of it. And for <laughs> yeah. all we know, the, the, it officially may end, but then, wow, really weird that all of the actors happen to plan trips to wherever Be Jeff Bezos lives every single week. Uh, <laughs> I like that, like, you know, Stephen Strait's off in some cabin in Idaho or something like this, you know, fly fishing on a lake and a helicopter lands. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, the set is ready and waiting. When did we? It's happening now. It is great, and they do just the right amount of lip service to the serious part. Yeah, they have a MacGuffin in that they have a drive that goes better than we know how to do, you know, but outside of that, you know, it's like there's only three times people are standing 
up and down it's magnets uh artificial you know accelerating decelerating or uh or or you're free flo- free floating or spinning around yeah they just they make an effort you know they they acknowledge it and they it's not hand waved away they have problems like if you get shot in zero gravity you got wounds you like wounds don't drain in regular gravity they they did their research to figure out what problems are it's just smart and it's like I, I nitpick stuff a lot. But shocker, Andrew nitpicks particularly science stuff, and I can't get into a lot of stuff because I'm like, oh, this is lazy. This is lazy. And and your writer's like, well, you know, people, I'm like, no, like, it was lazy. If I was going to write, you know, a Roman historical piece, you know, I would make sure they were speaking Latin, let's say, not Greek. You know, I would try to make it accurate. And some space stuff, they're like, meh. And you're like, why? It makes it more interesting. And and that's like, you get these new complications. Battlestar Galacta is great because Ronald D. Moore was like, um, what if we don't have infinite shuttlecrafts? What if we don't have infinite torpedoes? What happens then? And right. Like, Ooh, you know, not not just a new alien with a funny nose each week. Uh, Artie, well, uh, we'll take a break and do after things. Yeah. How about it? I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna right. run to the restroom. Right, BRB. It, Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. I want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in for uh. Uh, for the uh, for Deck the Marbles, the holiday marbles streams. Uh, we did nine great days. We raised a, raised a lot of money for Extra Life, so thank you, uh, everybody who did that. It was a lot of fun. I'm still blown away by how much money you guys uh, uh, donated. I think as a team, the Diamond Club TV team raised like oh, like six thousand dollars or something, and uh, ended up in the top three, top three hundred fifty, three three thirty, I believe, in in all of uh, in all of the extra life teams for 2020. So thank you everybody who, uh, 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 who, who donated. Thank you to Kent and Amos who put together the stream of the Um, and, and everyone who took part in it. That was, that was a lot of fun. I had, I, uh, uh, was not able to watch a lot of it, but I did catch a lot of, um, Kuhan. Kuhan, our friend Kuhan does like, uh, pub trivia, pub style, pub trivia style streams every week, I think, or I don't know if he does it seasonally. Um, but that was that was super fun to see him him and his friend, and I think they had Jackie Hearn on guesting. Um, that was really cool. That was also very intense trivia. It made me it it made me just sit back and like, oh yeah, I just I write bull I write bullshit games every week. These guys do like real trivia. Um, that was cool. That was cool seeing them. They have an, they have an interesting setup. Um, so uh, uh, thank you everybody. If if you missed it, if you if you missed uh the the fi- the final deck the marble stream. Announced February, just so if people maybe didn't miss it or didn't see it. Um, starting in February, we'll have more details and schedule soon. But we're going to be doing weekly um, marbles, a weekly marbles league, which will be fun. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I've got all sorts of plans for how to how to how to how to how to, how to rank people, how to do points, and uh, uh, all, all I don't know, just all of that. I'm I'm still figuring out, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I I had such a good time doing the marbles with you guys uh, every day. We'll be doing it every day, but every week I think is something where we can do a lot of fun stuff. Um, I've got uh, I've I got a new stream deck in. I got I finally ordered a real size stream deck, so I'm gonna have more buttons to push, and and uh, uh, and I guess I can keep the old one too. I need to find another USB port. Um, all the stream decks. All the stream decks. I know they're cool though. They're they're like I don't know. There's something about it, like. All the stuff on it, most of the stuff on it, you yeah, see you got that's that's the one I got, the the the, the medium size one. I have a, I have the small one now and it's tough cuz it's like, well, if I want to have like scenes or something, then I have to have a button dedicated to switching scenes, which means I only have like five buttons. I you know what else is cool? Like I put like my note app on there, so I can just click that and all of a sudden my note app is open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is lazy because the buttons I just move my <laughs> mouse down there but for some reason I'm just going mm-hmm. notes Google Drive and well Google Drive's cool because um that's great cuz like I don't have to open up you know browser so yeah stream deck's a cool thing yeah it's 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 awesome and like the integrations and stuff that it has with the streaming software is is real like even vmix which we use here in the studio like has integrations with it so like you can you can really I mean it's it's not the same thing as like a full you know uh switching deck but you can do a lot of stuff with the with these little these little devices did i ever tell you when i got to go to comdex with pen and teller Mm -mm. this is a billion years ago back when one there was comdex (laughs) and pen was 
friends with the founders of New Tech, okay. right? Oh yeah, sure. And so New Tech did Video Toaster and all that sort of stuff, Lightwave 3D, really cool stuff, 90s, pushed the edge for what you could do with consumer PCs and stuff. Like they built like the white you know, Video Toaster because off of the Amiga, graphics like Babylon 5 and other TV shows would use it. And so I was telling Bryce when I went to Comdex with Penn and Teller, actually it's just Penn, and uh, Penn had been invited by the founders of there and that to unveil their cool new product. And Penn strides up on stage, you know, does his talk, whatever. And the, the founders come out and they, you know, they come out there. And uh, side note, the original video toaster circuit board. Those of you, the video toaster was a, was a, uh, an, a add an on for the Amiga. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the, the Amiga, which was the great grandchild of the Commodore sixty four, same same group, right? Well, they acquired Amiga, but yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was yeah. So they allowed you to do cool video editing and stuff like this. Like, there's Kiki, Kiki Stockham. We're watching a video for like you could do all sorts of cool video transitions and stuff and things like this. And then they added you know, like the you know they're able to add like the video to do nonlinear editing or very proto early version of this. But anyhow. I remember the original motherboard, prototype motherboard, was wired by Dana Carvey's brother. No kidding. Wow. Dana Carvey's brother was an engineer. I think he's, I think he's no longer with us. Um, but yeah, he was funny because he looked like a Wozniak kind. Of, he was like this brilliant engineer. And so it kind of this sort of funny thing. But anyhow, the that founders special? go walks, they strut up to the front of the, the, uh, the, the auditorium and they unveil the next product and they pull this thing. I set it there, and it was a box that was like this big, this big, size of literally the size of a bread box. And this was going to be the completely portable video toaster. And it had a screen on the other end of it, whatever. And so you could do video editing, all this completely self contained. Everybody's like, Whoa! never got released, never happened. <laughs> they got acquired or whatever, like this. But I remember being at that product unveiling for this, and it was such a cool thing. And then do you think now of like, what a $99 phone does. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. it's got the camera, the HD camera, all these other sorts of things. And so we will, we probably will never see that portable video toaster. Like uh, lit literal thing is me at dawn being annoyed that my telephone couldn't get my dog's face in focus fast enough as she was moving around to also mm. capture the God rays, but also I want those God rays out of focus in the background, in a uh -huh. portrait to make it, to simulate the effect of a super shallow depth of field, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, we still can't uh, stitch videos together. That's the, uh, no, you can't just stitch it. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to, oh I now have to God. open up the free iMovie app to stitch them together. Oh. <laughs> I, you want to know nostalgia? Why trip? can't the AIs do this stuff? Why do we not have AI interns where we just say, <laughs> yeah, stitch it all together, make it good, also make a VR version just in case I want. You'll see. You'll see. I got to send this to you, Bryce, if you want to just take a look at this. This is the introducing. Uh, I'm having all kinds of internet problems. Yeah, uh, I will. I will say that once once oh, you, you switch to uh, cellular, uh, your video has been super smooth. Yeah, yeah, we're having network problems here. Um, there People are going back to work. Actually, look... I bet it's because everybody's going back to work. I actually would not be surprised about that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, introducing the video toaster four thousand. If you look up that video for that, you get Will Wheaton, Tony Hawk, Penn Jillette, and Kiki Stockhammer. Uh, huh. 1993. By the yeah. way, this video was made entirely with bated breath. Video oh, toaster. toaster. Oh, I know that. Uh, what? Oh, ah! Those effects. That's over double the year. Yeah. Ah! Community access Watching television it. will never be the w same. Watching this video in 1993 would be like us watching. A video watching this. Let's watch this now. It's like watching a video from 1965. <laughs> oh, sure. An average week. It's older than Star Trek. The networks bring you six made for TV movies. Dull. 18 hours of sitcoms. Ditto. 
35 hours of infomercials. Insane. 44 hours of soap operas. Very dull. 62 <laughs> hours of reruns. I saw that. And 3.2 days of commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Whose voice is this? Now, it's payback time. Payback time! It sounds like uh, the guy who plays the president in Rick and oh, Morty. What do you mean? You see, there are only three of them. You mean the networks? Yeah, the old style networks and their face. Is that even right. true in 1993? Right. There are 30 million. Uh, I, I guess that would have been before Fox, huh? Uh, well, if you didn't count PBS and if you also didn't really count Fox, which a lot of people did. And it was before WB and UPN had had gobbled up a bunch of local, you know, third or fourth choices. generation of the most successful video tool of oh all gosh. time. I can't, I, I don't know how much more of this I can watch. <laughs> we, <laughs> this is starting to kill me. <laughs> can we see celebrity? Oh my God, look at Tony Hawk. User definable speeds. Wow. <laughs> Boo, right. play Vink Blink 182. Fail. It, also invent them. <laughs> Hey, um, shut up, all of you. Fun fact, I have this on VH. I have the <gasps> factory V. I have the VHS original of this somewhere. That's wow. awesome. Drop shadows. Uh-oh. Also, that did not demonstrate what a drop shadow a, looked like. <laughs> okay, yeah, did this time. Shadow. They make them look oh, okay. worse, though. They should be using those in that shot. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, is that oh. a photorealistic clapper? Whoa! The car! God knows that made its way into some of my videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, how did that magician. lady walk in there? As you can see, the video effects in the Toaster 4000 blow away all the old dinosaur equipment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that made TV die back. Oh my God, I love it! That's so cool. That's a I, great find. It, and it's day. It's it's such a revolution. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's true, right? I mean it, it pushed video video art and, and video production forward a lot. Yeah. Also yeah. It just didn't age well. <laughs> I mean, what does? Yeah. It's well, fine. it's not supposed to. I mean, it, how do you how do you do a very nineteen ninety three video that's gonna it's not meant to. Some things should age. Some things aren't meant to. Yeah. I know? mean, if it if it was if it if it if it aged well, then it would look like all the other things that it said stunk. <laughs> yeah, like it's like watching like watch Microsoft Night Windows Windows ninety five launch. Oh yeah. Right. Remember that. Remember the launch of Windows ninety five. Sure. We watched we watched yeah. the videos on Night Attack. All the like the friends uh, uh, actors that they hired yeah. to. Uh, yeah. The star in those and things. it's just, yeah, it's such a huge Rolling Stones, you know, were paid a huge amount of money so they could use Start Me Up. And it's just like, I don't know. Like, I know they do fanfares for like Windows versions, but I don't even know when the last Windows version came out. I think they figured out that it's like, how about we just always keep it up to date? It'll just be called Windows. Crazy Man. idea. Well, yeah. just, just don't worry about it. How about we not worry about <laughs> yeah. what we're finally getting yeah. right? I think they, I think they came, I think Microsoft came out and said, we're going to change every, we're going to make everything look different again <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. Um, okay. You guys want to do after things? Do you guys have a, anybody have a heart out? Or, you're probably not going to do happy hour today, right? Brian? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we don't have yeah, 2 PM is mine. Um, that's it. Okay. So we got, we got plenty of time. Yeah. Um, cool. Are well, you ready to do some after things then? Yep. Yep. Yes. All right. I'll catch you in for after things in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Brian Brushwood. Heck yeah. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey. So, man, I'm watching some YouTube videos. As I watch YouTube, don't judge me. It's a new thing. You should check it out. You, oh. YouTube? And, uh, Is that like my boot? So YouTube? bold. That's like my favorite Wh indie band. Y-O-U-T-U-B-E. Oh. Okay. W-H-Y do you... Yeah. dot com h t t p s colon what is s slash is it a forward slash or a backward slash i mean just 
just so you know, like of the three of us, you're the only one who could tap out on this bit because Bryce and I are Keep very going. accustomed to keeping this alive for 90 minutes straight. Uh, so uh, this YouTube thing and uh, a commercial popped up and, and I went to go click fast forward, but it was, it was funny. I stopped because it was like, and it was like English dubbed into like other actors. And it was sort of like this kind of poorly sort of dubbed sort of thing. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm watching... Um, uh, you know, some Netflix, you know, German movie or something like this. So I was strangely fascinated and it was kind of bizarre. And a person's going like, what would you bring with you if you could travel back in time? You know, and then the animation player playing a video game and animation takes over. So I bring a gun and then somebody gets run over. <laughs> they show a cartoon of a guy getting run over by a knife, even though he has a gun and stuff. Like I bring a lighter and the cartoon of this woman getting burned at stake using her own lighter. I'm like, well, this is weird. And this guy goes, I bring the book. The, the good book? The book. This is the book. And I'm like, okay. You got me hooked. I'm the cynic. And I never. Just, I, I swear. If, 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 just, just please allow me for three seconds to fantasize that the guy <laughs> is Steve Gutenberg. And he's acting like the he's book. trying to do a <laughs> Kickstarter to bring the book back to before 1640 or whenever. It hey was. there, Surf Starter. <laughs> I've got an idea for movable type. <laughs> surf you Starter? Mean, you mean between Johannes? Like Johannes Gutenberg or Steve Gutenberg, the actor? No, I meant Steve Gutenberg, the actor. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Okay, <laughs> which right, makes right, it so cool. much better. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, oh, I won't like, say like, which like, book like, it is, like, but it's pretty important. Wink. <laughs> he winks both eyes. So I'm like, uh, and they had a link, and I went to go click on the link because it was a Kickstarter project. I'm like, okay, all right color me interested and i go cut and find it then i had to do all sorts of searching to find it which was like well that wasn't very effective advertising then i go and uh, uh oh okay this is my favorite moment where two out of three hosts oh my God. have seen what 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 a thing is <laughs> I'm still stuck on Steve Gutenberg asking for money for yeah. a time machine to go back to bring his Gutenberg Bible to a, to an earlier era. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, I'm like, I'm like, man, how cool would it be if it was like a Mormon thing, a Scientology thing, or something else like this? Any what of the is, cool religions. <laughs> actually. This is a book about a crazily illustrated book called The Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding a Civilization, a 400 page book all about how you would try to, how technology works, how you'd rebuild stuff in sort of this crazy, whimsical kind of way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I am certain that there will be a twist where I will not pledge my undying love to this. But as an idea, this is quite literally something i've thought way too long about like really? like like, like mm -hmm. what well, like like if you're gonna teleport uh there was a how many of those shirts do you own where it's like this is the only shirt if i go back in time i only need this shirt and it's got like the polio vaccine and all that other uh, uh i plead the fifth but more importantly <laughs> like it was the uh, uh the ben stiller show had a segment uh a sketch called like a b plus or b minus history student or whatever mm. it was somebody who traveled back in time but barely remembered anything about history <laughs> and so and so it's janine Groflo saying like you're crossing a river and you look very stern and he's like why she's like tra tra traffic i think i don't know i i've got nothing <laughs> <laughs> so it's beautifully illustrated what have you i'm like oh this is really cool expensive Go on. How much do you think they've raised so far? How uh, do I get to Books. ask how when when you say expensive, what I hear is a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars. If it's bespoke and nice, I could I could see it doing well. Maybe maybe upwards of a million. It's eighty nine dollars. The book is ninety dollars. Okay. For the level yeah. one. $90. That seems for, yeah. Okay. That tracks. Yeah, I, I think you're you're you good guess. It has raised over two. If the pledged goal, the goal was eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Eight thousand dollars probably afford to be able to afford to do a press run or whatever to start a press run. Two point one million dollars. That's great. 
it's Isn't it? um well it's it's double great because it's it's a simple idea like yes the artifact itself is a thing you put on your coffee table or whatever but the story is you're about to teleport yourself back in, into the past and every page you go through for example like i remember being in 6th 7th grade and getting the uh the space shuttle instruction manual you know, which, uh, as far as I know, is not the official NASA space shuttle instruction. You didn't go out and build your own <laughs> space shuttle. Yeah, I mean, but 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 the, the the that fantasy. I mean, there's there's power in that. Um, I dug it a lot, and and the idea of like the time traveler's handbook, I I think is wonderful. Yeah, I think it's just a. It looks beautifully illustrated. Again, I think it was the goofy commercial got me in, and then. I went to go look at this and I'm like, oh, this is really beautiful. You know, this is this is a, you know, this is a passion project, a very, very well planned, very well implemented one. And I, you know, I like this. And the fact that this artist was able to put together a book, you know, and to raise a non insignificant amount of money was just, I think, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And it's I'm, like, like, it's a coffee, like, like, uh, I don't know, you can, you, I, I listen to a podcast all about criticizing Kickstarters. And I think the like, it's a coffee table book, like whatever it's goofy. And, and I don't, I, I mean, maybe there are prepper people out there who are like, I'm going to rebuild society with this book after we're all in the nuclear Holocaust, whatever. Uh, but I think it's, it's really well made. And I think it's a, it's a, an interesting take on kind of that idea. I mean, I, I was joking you about that shirt, but I, I've seen that shirt a lot. Some people really love that shirt. Um, and <laughs> and they're all wearing it as insurance, just in case just in today case. is the day. Just right? in case I get black knighted. No, but 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 it's one of those things where it's like, um, uh, no, nobody believes it's actually useful, but all of us really dig indulging in the fantasy of maybe this is the moment. Let me just review all of this. And what you're really doing is, you know, getting those those brief aha moments delivered in a page by page aspect with uh, gorgeous illustrations and so on yeah yeah it's not really it's just yeah the, the goal is you know the goal is to hey let's write let's put together a really cool it's an illust it's a beautifully illustrated from the intents of it sort of thing i love i dug that i thought like i really liked the fact of what this was was a guy was able to raise you know and you know, as you know kickstarters you see the big number and then you you have friends who do kickstarters and like everybody sees the big number and thinks we're millionaires now and it's like they don't always have to make a product and ship a thing and do all this other stuff yeah but still i could see i can imagine a world pre-kickstarter where you know an artist you know a good artist who has the wonderful illustrations and have this wonderful thing and wants to do something with it and has to convince publishers to go all in on it. I don't know who published it. might be a publisher put this thing out, but it was a publisher was able to take a risk on it because it was Kickstarter. You know, it, it made an amazing thing possible. It is worth, given that in After Things, we talk about like uh, ideas for the independent creator, uh, the mere fact that this has succeeded. So let's say whatever comes next, that'll be a pale imitation of this, is only going to make half the amount of money. What are some of the different second places that are going to be available everything from you know the 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 1000 years ahead go you can go to the future or go to you know i don't know a different dimension or alternate history or you know like like the same thing that that idea of the guide for just in case crazy sci-fi trope happens you know like like the like, guide to uh, not rebuild uh, civilization it's all the it's all the bad inventions over the years uh, or oh really i don't know <laughs> well, oh okay oh no no no. i mean for oh, oh, I, I thought you were i thought you were throwing shade oh no no no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea but, no, but and, and likewise a, uh the guide to first for. contact with aliens you know here's how you would establish you know a, a common language of 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 you know numbers and you know what's hydrogen and how do you represent pi and all of that stuff yeah, I mean, again, the point is it's an art book. It's not, you know, the premise is just, it's a it's a fun premise. The point is it's just a beautiful collection of art. It's really about the illustrations. And it's a neat, it's just neat that, you know, you could do, Brian could do Brian's Guide to Art, you know, monsters and, you know, a, a monster, whatever kind of, the idea that there is this really cool, you know, there's this vehicle. We've watched our friends, we watch people like Justin do stuff and watch you do Indiegogo. And, you know, I watch my friends with the Magic Puzzle Company do, 
the most successful puzzle in Kickstarter history with $3 million in sales. Um, and I love this, I love this part of the world we live in. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, if you had this idea, you would take it to a publisher and try to convince someone, you know, Hey, you make coffee table books here, here are all of our illustrations or our plans for illustrations. And, and, um, and then you kind of hope that you get worked into that machine and you get, you know, advertising or, or any sort of publicity. I mean, you, f you found this on a, on a YouTube video, uh, uh you know, a uh, commercial, right. An ad, mm -hmm. um, uh, and and now I think, especially on social media, where where people are more emboldened to sell things online. Uh, I mean, I see. I, I I don't know. I'm on Instagram a little bit more lately, and I see the types of ads for like commodities, right? Like I get a lot of ads for beds on on Instagram, and also those ads work. I need a new bed, um, but uh, it's not it's not Serta. It's not uh, Sealy. It's not the big names. It's like people who who are emboldened to do their own thing or their own type of design stuff. Yeah. It's like, and, and Brian, you know, you talk extensively about this, but it is, it's the idea that it used to be, what does it take to be successful? It takes work. It takes luck. Now it's, it takes work and it takes luck. Still need luck, but man does, you can go a lot further with work. Yeah. And, and more importantly, um, uh, Man, story matters. Story matters just outrageously. You you think about the simplicity of a story of, of everything from like, uh, uh, you know, Casper mattresses. We mentioned mattresses. Uh, uh, specifically talks about like, uh, you're going to get a box. You're not going to believe that we fit a mattress in that box. You're going to see a magic trick. It's mm -hmm. going to be great. And as best I could tell, they seem to deliver on that promise, right? Like, and they compete on price, right? Like, it's also cheaper than the big name brands or anything in the big stores, right? Or, or a Dollar Shave Club. It's like, uh, you know, what if somebody just, you know, had no f words to give and decided to, you know, enable everybody to have a clean shaven face for a dollar a month or whatever? I, you know, I, I don't know if I've talked to you about the the version of story that I've experienced. I had a conversation with a friend who's writing a nonfiction book and they've written before and they've never had like a huge success or whatever and i said well what's the book about and he explained to me the book and he's a smart guy he's a really smart guy and i said if i asked your wife with the book and he gave me this this couple paragraph description i said you have a problem because what's that i said if i asked your wife to describe your book what would she say and he stopped he thought it's like i don't know so that's the problem how will books books sell? Because you have to compress that narrative of what it's about. There has to be can be versions of it. But it has to be a sentence. Harry Potter boy goes to school for witchcraft. And and, and, and and this maybe we we might be about to diverge into a different direction. But I I often tell people a a good story. Full stop. If it's a good movie, it's a good book. If it's a good book, it's a good short story. If it's a good sto short story. It's a good tweet. Like like if you can't get it down to a tweet. It, yeah, and and beyond that, like I was, I was fussing with with my daughter, and I'm like uh, a noun, a verb, and an adjective. Uh, God dies elegantly, like that. That could be a, a four book, multi movie yeah. trans, you know, formative story. Eventually, and if I could expand on that, though, I'd say that it the, the whole thing doesn't have to be reduced down to it. An enjoyable aspect of it, at least. You know, because you can Pardon. say, like, the, the magic of Harry Potter really isn't this boy goes to a school for witchcraft and wizardy. It's a boy and his friends in this world. But that's harder for people to hook into, necessarily. It's sure. why we love it. It's, sure. it's why the new Star Wars films suck. But, but yeah, I'd say, like, you could just say, like, yes. But, but, some but part you, of it. Exactly. The, the, of it, yeah. the, the, the some part of it is, like, like yeah. eventually it's it, you could take a piece of it and reduce it to boy yep. discovers real magic or whatever. You know, like, uh, yeah. boy discovers magic. Version, yeah, and you could, like, Potter has a couple different versions. Like, that's the thing. It's, like, really, really super viral stuff. There's eight different ways you could describe it. You could, you could distill it. And you go, oh, wow, that's really cool. Oh, wow, it's really cool. Like, why do we love Star Wars? It's like, you know, it's like, because it's there's the Leia perspective, the Han Solo perspective, the Luke perspective, yeah. all of these different sort of things. You can narrow it down, but and it, then it, you blow it up. And also, and you're like, holy cow. So, yeah, and I think that's, I think about that a lot with books now. Like, why, if I look like, why did this book not do, why did this thing not do better? It's like, 
wasn't memeable. You could not describe it in a thing. And sometimes things can succeed out of sheer brute force over time, over time, over time. People just see it, you know, enough time people talk about it. It's hard with publishing because publishing, you have this window and you're gone. Theatrical movies, you got a couple weeks, poof, you're gone. Yeah, like, for example, um, like, I, I think about, like, a, specifically going back to the Kickstarter type of thing, where it's like uh, uh, the idea of, of uh, time travel on your coffee table, you know, essentially three thoughts, or or a puzzle uh, that is magical, or, or I, 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 I think you can reduce everything at its core to a very, very simple idea. I know that um, uh, Scam School, you know, in, in its original incarnation was um, a, 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 a you know, be popular at the bar or whatever. Uh, or likewise, you know, uh, uh, Mono Rogue, uh, Gentleman Warrior Scoundrel Quest. Or, yeah. I don't know how you would reduce it in a three I, I, Yeah, but I mean, I guess the, the thing I'm saying is that, like, there's a version that gets people's interest, and then there's a version that becomes the thing. The thing, the hook, the hook can be, you know, be popular at the bar. Great, I'm going to go read the game. No, no, no. I'm talking about Scam School. You right. know, like be popular, the, and, and but either one, okay. Somebody who wants that is interested, but it's like my I I argue like if people ask me about like oh what about the ring theory of writing or story I'm like they're all garbage because they've reduced a thing to it's like the hero myth like the hero myth is it's one of the biggest pieces of BS put on writers ever and people write really Ooh, bad stuff. Because, hold on, I would like to subscribe to your newsletter and I would like it within three to five minutes right now. What was the ring theory and why is the 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 man with the thousand faces the hero with the thousand faces bullshit? Sorry, I you can't. Cursed. You be, 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 because you whenever you try to name a great work that follows that pattern, the thing it's great really isn't because it follows that pattern. The hero, like we, you look at the original Star Wars, and people go, "Oh, it's the journey of Luke Skywalker." No, it's the journey of three friends, three friends and ancillary characters. Luke's story is one part of it, but it's the first twenty percent of the story is even about Luke Skywalker, R two D two, the protagonist. Da 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 da. All these other things happen. Luke, you know, Empire Strikes Back does not follow the hero's journey, and it's the greatest of all Star Wars films, maybe the greatest movie of all time. It's a complex sort of story about what goes on, and it's a war movie. It's just. We we think the thing is that we think we get the payoff. If you tried to write Star Wars based entirely upon, oh yeah, force this, and you, you all you do is a hero a thousand faces, you would write every bad version of Star Wars or Star knockoff that we've had ever since, because it misses everything that makes it great, which is the dynamics, the character, the relationship of the characters, I guess, the char right. the journey mm -hmm. of the multiple people there. It's why the new Star Wars movies suck, because it's like, oh well, Ray's going to follow this journey. Yes, and have no interaction. There's no friendship. Is there? Why is Star Trek great? Why is Harry Potter great? Why is Star Wars great? Why is like Lord of the Rings great? It's a relationship of a group of people. Character dynamics. Sometimes a trinity, sometimes ancillary characters, sometimes a duo, but a group of people in this really fantastical situation. The bond we we as humans as primates like I want to have friends. I want. It's not just my relationship to the world. It's my relationship to the people around you. And if there's not a relationship to the people around you, it's just world building hmm. in my theory speaking of which uh have, have, have we talked in a hot minute on this program about the mandalorian season one versus season two uh, g g g like, can imagine like, there's a, no, no but i would like to hear your theories on this well uh somebody somebody uh, came from chicago on twitter called me out rightly uh saying that what i loved about season one was how harsh the world was and what I wanted was more tenderness between, um, in this harsh world, uh, the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. And then season two delivered the exact thing I wanted, but in a monkey paw wish, did it at the expense of making the world seem like it had very nasty teeth. And that's why I, I somehow didn't like the second season as much as the first season. So, um, uh, I don't know. We, we, we hadn't really spoken a, 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 too much about that world. My, my take on season two is it was a lot more even than season one as far as quality. It was a much more even tempo for quality. 
season one, there were episodes that were really cringy from really bad writing. And there were really some great ones. It was a bit all over the place. Season two, I thought, had a better thing. But there is a monotonous story the storylines like video game levels without the other new without the ancillary stuff there's so many times i go here like i would like it if there was something else for me to care about or if there was another complication here and there's not and so it's a linear you need to get a thing to get the thing i got the thing great here's the thing so much that and the problem is is like you can take that plot can work fine if you're making a film like a western or something that's spaced a couple of years apart from other Westerns that are like that. But in every episode to use that sort of Western plot line becomes problematic. Um, and there are things are, and I don't want to knock it, but like, like I go like, it's no Witcher. Like I love the Witcher. If, if, if the level of writing that was in the Witcher was in Mandalorian, Mandalorian would be game of Thrones. It would be the most epic thing ever, but the writing is not, it's not that solid to me. Not horrible, but it drags and it's repetitive. What about you, Bryce? I still haven't seen one frame of The Mandalorian, so I uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't really compare the two seasons. Smart man. <laughs> I'm, it I'm turns out, out you're vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get well, a little bad. Brian, on, on my take, I mean, what's your thought? Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think that, uh, 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 Kim from Chicago was right. I think that, uh, I like worlds with real consequences. I like knowing that there's no net. I like that I'm genuinely afraid for characters for getting killed or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also like, um, I thought they sort of, uh, uh, tiptoed around any genuine relationship between, uh, Din Djarin and, and, and Grogu, which well, <laughs> nobody knows those words, yes. uh, but, and, uh, I, I would have, I would have, uh, eventually where we got in our Twitter back and forth is in general, I just want to see the contrast turned up. I want to see, um, uh, much like you got, uh, from Roland of Gilead in the dark tower with Jake of New York. Um, you got this sort of dropping of all pretense arms around tears flowing down. I love you. I love you too moment. And it's powerful because it's against the backdrop of a truly horrific, awful decaying universe. And, and I think that that I'm not going to say they should or should not have done that because obviously what they're doing is working great, but I will say that that does seem to be where my taste palette wants to land. So I'll give you an example, like how applying what I said to that. There is an episode where he's in a perilous situation and certain forces rescue him. And you're like, okay, cool. Two minutes later, he's in a perilous situation and we don't even get a breath or a beat or anything. And forces come in and rescue him again. And, and I'm like, this is the problem. There is no pacing. here. There is nothing for me to fear. There is nothing for me to go, oh no, what's going to happen next? And then, because it's just, it jumps to that. It's just no buildup. And I've seen that a lot of times where you could get that darkness and that depth there, even by taking the storylines they have here and just tweaking them a bit by saying, no, we've got to make this a really what the F moment or something bad could happen, whatever. But it just short circuits. It just jumps to the next scene before we have anything in there. And like the, the final episode, besides the horrific CGI, the god awful CGI that could have been fixed in. 24 hours using deep fake. It's an embarrassment, an embarrassment that that got released. I wasn't excited about that final moment because it felt like a video game cutscene. Uh, not talking about that episode, there was definitely another episode where, by the numbers, you could, in a court of law, say, Brian, uh, I hereby sentence you to uh, uh, heresy because, by the numbers, this has everything that you said you wanted. And I'm like, yeah, but you didn't make me feel it. And then, and then I saw who the director was, and suddenly I had an epiphany, and I was like, I, oh, that matters. That yeah. matters. Pacing, turns teasing, out, all that out stuff. You can make you can make seven thousand dollars look like seven million, and you can make seven million look like seven thousand. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And now we move on to the next topic. <laughs> it's an awesome thing. Um, <laughs> I I was going. 
why am I seeing lens distortions? Why am I seeing the same three stormtroopers killed over and over and over again? Why this is like I'm like this was like I'm like a summer car. This is like everything that was cool and no longer cool about '90s action movies. That like we realized that there are better ways to. It was and then I got da da da. And I'm like, well now I know. I'm like. Uh, I, I, like, I definitely had that moment. I, there, there, there was definitely. I had it. Oh. I had it. Yes, uh, uh, real, real phenomenon. Uh, but all of which is to say, uh, it sounds to me like uh, you and I appear to be aligned in that we preferred season one over season two? Question mark. I, I don't know that I have a choice. I mean, I would say that I liked the consistency of season two. I felt like more happened in season one, though you know, more of an escalation. Uh, I felt like season two, at least we felt like we kind of saw different places. I would say, yeah, I'd say season one had more variety, which I liked. Yeah. Felt more real. The world. Yeah. And I just got the end of the final episode with (laughs) such. I couldn't, you don't understand. It's like, I mean, you understand. I, I, (sighs) <laughs> I, 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 I have a more complicated relationship in that on paper, like if I wrote down everything me reading the extended universe novels would want out of a show on a streaming service in the future would have looked an awful lot like that. And so, no, so weirdly, all of my fan fiction came to life and I had complicated feelings I, about it. The problem was the way I agree. Like I'm not, I don't have a problem with what, the the bullet points the bullet points are fine with me it's the execution that drives me nuts and then again also it's like and also too like with just under to pay, harp on the vfx was like i have friends in the vfx business who i love and are great people but they're still stuck in the 90s with what you can do like well we just use, we'll use this version we'll use this 20 year later version of this to do this and it's like that's old that doesn't work as well as it could there's new ai and ml ways to do this stuff is better and i know vfx supervisors and they just they don't just like they had to just like Pixar had to sneak its way into the House of Mouse to revolutionize Disney because the animators at Disney rejected Pixar, didn't want to use their technology. The higher ups were like, well, let's see what we can do. And now Pixar runs Disney animation with VFX. This was a generation like, we should be using computers to do stuff, guys. And now people are like, you should be using ML and deepfake and AI to do stuff. We're like, oh, no, we're fine. We, we still need to have artists controlling these things and doing this stuff. You already know how to do this one thing. Yeah. Uh, th- th- there was a project where um, I, w- I was pitching an idea and it involved a character where a uh, uh, wheel of death or something was spun or whatever. And it would, it, yes, it would be in character to have this character throw a knife and have it land somewhere on the wheel of death. And the obvious solution was well we already know how to just set things up so somebody pretends to throw a dagger and then you know one pops out and it looks as mm-hmm. though it landed there and it's like yeah but but to, uh, from my perspective i i was like or we could very easily have an actual wheel spin and then have it just happen to land on a thing now one of those involves you know everybody engaging in a suspension of disbelief the other uses happens to use the thing that you already know how to do but and and so uh, there there was some back and forth in there so uh, my my point being i totally get the whole like yeah but we know how to do it this way and 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 but they don't. the inertia that 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 that, that pulls you into but, but they don't it always gets criticized because it fails and then when they did when they did, you know, the Rogue One, Leia, right, and it looked like crap. You know, you do, you, you know, excuse me, video deep fakers went out and said, "Here's how to do it better," and it was much better. The Tarkin, they said, "Here's how to do Tarkin better," and it came out with Tarkin. This looks better. We know this thing because it fails. It always, it's all, all those times always failed before, and there's been a method for five years now that does it better. And then they do something in Mandalorian, and they use the same old crappy method that looks like garbage. And I just dread having to watch the Disney Plus Mandalorian behind the scenes so they clap themselves on the back saying how great it does. It took one dude 24 hours to do a better job. 
and he was available. You could have got him, whatever. But some VFX supervisor, somebody out there is like, didn't even give it. If you, I guarantee you, if Sean Favreau had the chance to see, we could do it this way or do it this way. Which do you want? Favreau would have chosen the deep fake version. Uh, what's funny is all the things I want to talk about have nothing to do with the execution and all have to do with like um, whatever scene we're talking about. Uh, how objectively that is a terrible person to be put into that role. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like there's, quite there's literally a, of everyone in the galaxy that's the person i would trust the least given a tangible track record but that's neither here nor there that's all storytelling <laughs> well i mean at that point you know their daycare operator license hadn't been established yet and <laughs> Yeah, and nobody knew last... at the time. Which only makes it and... worse, knowing the abuse that was happening at that daycare. <laughs> but he never went there. That's the thing. Because remember, he never went to that daycare. So the other, the, the who you would have gone to went to that daycare, and they were horrible. Yeah. They were horrible daycare owners. So he may have been the best choice, because God knows that other one was awful. He was homeschooled. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> and they had the illegal paintings of Mickey and Minnie on the wall, and Disney said, yeah. no, no, yeah. no. Oh, God, I I want to I want to know who wrote that letter. <laughs> uh, uh, what this C and D letter? Was, or? The, yeah, the D. Like there was a daycare that had like Disney characters painted on it. Oh yeah, those are uh, Disney. Yeah. Just the real things. Yeah. Yeah. And then, if and only then, like, there was a word for soulless, soul sucking uh, the lawyers, attorneys. <laughs> that's what they are. Yeah, but yeah. somebody I wasn't. But someone has to put that on paper. Is yeah, somebody had to drive by there and say, "Well, I'm going to tell, I'm going to contact my friend at Disney Legal to tell them." To I'm not actually a vampire. I'm more of a para vampire. I just work <laughs> for vampires and make sure to put out all of their soul sucking letters on their behalf. Yeah, it's like they're people that you know go to bars and stuff. Like they look like you know that's a little different. Like they listen to like to see if like you know they're not paying their their ASCAP oh. licenses and stuff. Yeah, my ASCAP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So anyhow, fun times. Yeah. Uh, what are your picks? Uh, man, I don't know that I have anything new. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about Slay the Spire, but uh, but that was oh. a good recommendation. I've I continue to give it a try, but but yeah. it it suffers from because there's an element of chance every every um uh, tournament you play, kind of against yourself. It's mm -hmm. like three every or run. four rounds end. I'm like. Well, this is a bummer tournament. I might as well restart again. Um, so I, that, it, yeah. and you kind of each of the classes. It's a it's a run based deck building game, and each of the classes have different um, kind of methods, different kind of um, uh, I don't know what you would call them, niches. You kind of have to work into types. Yeah, yeah, based on how you draw, and that's that's just something that comes up that that you get a better groove for. Like, oh, okay, I'm really getting more 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 blocks so i'm getting like a fortress build oh i'm actually getting more of an attack kind of an aggressive build and that's tough because it takes a while for you to build up that kind of callus of like of recognizing what what build you're going to get on any yeah to feed. to speak the language like like in an ideal version you would know all the different ways to play and no matter what you were dealt you would be all like oh yeah, yeah okay so i guess it's going to be you know a rainy day i could i could work with that yeah and and like I think one of the nice things about Slay the Spires, there's only four classes. Like you're not kind of overwhelmed by a lot of different classes that all have a couple of different ways to try stuff. Have you been trying? Yeah, uh, uh, there's basically, um, uh, I only played the, the generic warrior once, mm -hmm. but it's like outside of that, there's like a dude who there's the does his injury at the end with the poison. Yeah. There's another dude that does his injury at the beginning of each turn with his robot orbs or orbs. whatever uh -huh. um and then i haven't unlocked the fourth one yeah i don't i don't know what the, the fourth one they added a few years in yeah um and and those play if you haven't if you oh, i guess if you haven't I, i'd say maybe give those other ones a try to kind of see because the the different colored decks that they have are really different you know I, I really i i really like playing the um the green that that poison deck yeah because I, 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 that that's what i've gravitated towards as well because like at some point it's like you know your job is like just live and by virtue of showing up yeah my radioactivity is going to destroy you mm -hmm. eat, eat, eat dog poop but it gets but but it gets tough there you know that that works on some cases but not all the cases and so uh cool i'm glad that you're still giving that a try yeah 
Um, I got a pick. Uh, this is something I played, picked up a couple of days ago uh, called Umurangi Generation. This is on PC. Um, do, you, do you ever play uh, Pokemon Snap? You know Pokemon Snap? Um, this is kind of like if Pokemon Snap took place in like a dystopian, uh, a dystopian world. Uh, you are a photographer in a, uh, I don't know, some sort of occupied city there's not like fighting or anything but you, you see like a lot of armed uh un forces around and um it's clear that this is like a strange kind of um I, I don't know the world the world of this game is very very weird but what you do is you go each level and you complete uh bounties you take photos of specific things you got to take a photo of two cats in the same picture but you got to use a telephoto lens or you got to find a photo where the word gamer is in the same shot seven times or whatever and as you play you unlock different lenses and the ability to like adjust contrast and saturation and um and you can save your your snapshots if you'd like when you take them um i i think it, it's got some rough edges um but it has a really cool kind of low poly sort of style and i think it's really smart in terms of how it judges your art it they basically explain like, hey, it, it, uh, photography is subjective, but we're going to give you points based on how many, how much color you <laughs> whether get. Whether or not there was a face visible or whether or not the uh, subject was in focus, that kind of thing. Uh, not even focus. It's like a color. Is there is there a good use of color composition? How does it, how do, how do things kind of land in the frame? And then content. So how many figures are in it? Um, and is, is, is there a Mavis Beacon teaches typing takeaway in terms of like, do you learn about F stops and ISOs and all of that stuff? No, but no, okay. um, it's, it's a little more basic than it's a little more pared down. You know, they, they make a point of like, you take the photo and then you adjust your saturation or your contrast, your exposure and whatnot. Um, and it kind of begins and ends there. And that's, that's actually kind of a good thing for it because the, the rest of the game is, uh, it's not a super deep game. I mean, you make money. Um, but the money doesn't add up to anything. You just get point. You get equipment based on if you finish all your bonuses and stuff. I, I just think it's got a really interesting style, and and the soundtrack is 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 fantastic. Um, kind of a kind of a electronic hip hoppy kind of sound um, that I think works really well with these kind of gritty urban environments. Um, I and- just read the first two lines of the description. <laughs> <laughs> Umurangi Generation is a first-person photography game in a SE future. Dude, that's future. amazing. Um, so I don't I, know. Yeah. Then not my pick, but Brian, to your point, if you want to learn about photography and f-stops and stuff, I suggest this book. The Working Camera, the world's first pop-up Yeah, what's camera. great about it, because you're like, oh, but you know what? I need to have a camera in front of me. Yeah. Oh, that's really clever. <laughs> is that is that and from the is... same guy who we already love his other pop up books, or is this a no, different no. one? Th- oh, this okay. is Ron Vandermeer, who was like one of one of the old school original great pop up guys. So oh, that's old awesome. book, but you can still find it. And it's what we're looking at is it's a pop up camera, like a film camera that shows you like there's little film stock inside of there, all the different points, the lenses, what each thing does. There's a great example of like how to. Uh, how to like look at like range and stuff like there's a a thing that shows a like oh it shows the, how uh, an aperture works an actual yeah, iris. actually slides yeah, yeah. it is wow. as a learning tool incredible like here's this scene mm-hmm. for like a oh like wow. understanding that's pretty like cool. how a shot's composed etc and you can put like different lenses and the setup you can light that setup all this an amazing amazing oh yeah here's this one here like um uh so we're looking at kind of oh my gosh so 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 you're able to we're we're actually seeing the webcam go right up to the aperture looking through the the various size of lenses yeah yeah or lens size yeah 50 millimeter 20 25 millimeter and so on yeah so it's it's a paper camera that's looking at a landscape and it shows us what's divisible yeah, wow. the different like as, you, as I just put this slider through there, and so that's cool. What a amazing! It is an amazing book, and I don't know um, for learning stuff like I would. It's a lost art, or it's a diminished art that I would love to see more of. That kind of thing of like different ways to teach stuff. It doesn't have to be 
all apps, which I love because that's what I know how to make. You can think of a different way to teach a thing. Okay. It's beautiful. Uh, cool. And it's called what? The working camera. The working camera. The world's first pop-up guide to photography. Okay. Now I could see doing a thing in VR. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, get like a buy used one or whatever, like see what you can get there. But uh, I could see a VR version of like, let me show you old school camera. But to the point, Bryce, that game you showed me, yeah. I don't know if I would ever play it, but I love that. I love that the game is go around taking photos in this very interesting environment and you're judged by this. And there have been other photography, it's a premise of games, but that, yeah. I love that we live in this world where indie creators, and I don't know if I made this point before, and I think we might do an entirely, and after things, I maybe want to talk next week about cyberpunk versus Among Us. Oh, and, sure. You know, the game that we thought everybody would be talking about right now, well, it is cyberpunk, but for wrong reasons. The game nobody thought we'd be talking about, you know, from last year was Among Us. And, right. and we live in this dual world, which is great. But uh, my pick, my pick is a simple pick, and it's a repeat pick, and I say this a lot. Had the vacation, had Christmas vacation, which means for most of us is... I had time, you know, same as less people bothering me for less people wanting my attention. Mm -hmm. I've been coding a lot, doing a lot of different stuff. And one of the things i had been avoiding was uh, I have done a little bit in React, which is, you know, a framework, a library for like working in JavaScript and building web pages. A lot of stuff you interact with on the web is React stuff, web pages that are, you know, websites made with React. It was created by Facebook, but it's an open platform you can do stuff with. And I said, you know what? Let me just sit down. I built a thing, a cool kind of tool thing. And I'm like, I built it in sort of just regular JavaScript. I'm like, time to sort of dig in and really grasp React. Mm -hmm. So I rebuilt the thing entirely from the ground up in React just to learn all the things and to do this. I, I really, really, not everybody needs to learn to code. Let me make it very clear. But if you're trying to figure out your place in this world, and you're trying to figure out what you want to do, and you have a lot of energy, learn to code. Learn to code. Because I have watched, in the last six months, I've watched multiple people create million-dollar businesses out of nothing but code. Just sit down, create businesses, say there's a problem I can solve, and I can build a thing to solve it and make things that didn't exist before and raise millions of dollars. I've watched this not once, I've watched this twice, maybe three times in the last six months from people I interact with go from nothing to having businesses they built. Now, these are all clever, motivated people. There's a lot of clever, motivated people out there going, what do I do? And coding, coding doesn't mean your life becomes, then you have to code for the rest of your life. You know, you know, you can be a carpenter and then you can learn how to hire other carpenters. You can be a baker, then you, you, can, you can be a chef and then have a restaurant. You can, it's this entry point to do stuff. And if you're inclined or you ever thought, maybe I want to, OMG, learn. Because it's like you, you look, it's like a magical power. When you can just, oh, I need to build a thing for this. Oh, I'll build this up. I know how to put it on a server. And boom, now here's the thing people can use. Oh, I need to build a thing and there are things. So if you want to build things and make things, consider coding. Nice. Right on. So many, it's so easy, like YouTube videos, everything. It's just, it's, 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 uh, you know, and I've got, once I started, I think I mentioned this before, like the month that I first, like a month or so after I'd first started, you know, sort of like four years ago, I started getting job offers. You know, people didn't know that I was a writer, didn't know anything about me. I talked to people at parties, I thought oh, I built this thing or whatever. And I'd be like, oh, wow, you know, and it was because I built things. I'd say build things, build things, build things. So um, that's my thing. YouTube, learn things. Nice. A novel prediction. It's H T T P colon. Now, wait, is, there, is, is there an S in this one? All right. Is there an S in this one? All right. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> it's been after. Hey, that'll do it for us here today. Uh, yeah, no man. happy hour uh, today. Uh, no cord killers today. I got to find a. Oh my God, 1986. Are you kidding me? The pop up book? Yeah. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, we will probably do a bizarre briefing in the afternoon. So uh, stay, stay tuned for that. And we will be running a pre-recorded episode of Night Attack uh, while Justin is busy following the runoff elections in Georgia. So uh, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. Love you guys. Thank you, guys.